Welcome to College Football on ESPN. Midweek action tonight from Buffalo, where the UB Bulls have bowl eligibility still alive at 3-6 and six tonight. They host the Falcons from Bowling Green. It has been a season of heartbreak for Lance Leipold's Buffalo Bulls. 3-6 and six to the edge of being eliminated from a bowl. And those six losses have come by an average of less than five points per game. Two one-point losses, plus the epic seven-overtime defeat to Western Michigan. Hi, folks. Kevin Brown with former Buffalo Bill Ray Bentley. Pleased to be with you from UB Stadium. And for Buffalo, yes, three and six. They have to win their final three to get to a bowl game. The good news, though, they have their quarterback back. That is good news for them. Tyree Jackson made his return last week after four weeks out with a knee injury. And when he came back, it was a different quarterback. He, uh, he was a dual threat guy before he got hurt. Came back last week, didn't run a single time, threw the ball 50 times for over 300 yards, and he has a favorite target, and that's the guy that they need to get the ball to, and that's Anthony Johnson. He's outstanding. They like to get it to him at least 15 times during the course of the game. They'll move him all over, use him as a decoy. His strength is going up in a crowd and yanking that ball back down. Top 10 in the nation in yards per game, Johnson. Bowling Green, meanwhile, 2-7 and seven the record, but this is a team that finished last year strong with three straight wins. They had a big win last week over Kent State thanks to a couple of fabulous young players. They got a couple of true freshmen on offense that are worth taking a look at. Jarek Dagey, their quarterback, and then Andrew Clare, the running back. Clare's an explosive guy. He's got great patience, lateral quickness, and the first guy rarely will get him down. Now, Jarek Dagey, He's supremely confident in the pocket. Very advanced understanding of the offense for such a young football player. Does a great job with his progressions, but the best thing is his deep ball. He throws that accurately and on time, and that's huge in this Bowling Green offense. Head coach for Daggy in his second year, Mike Jinx, came from Texas Tech. The latest in a long line of what's been some very successful coaches at Bowling Green, the most recent two, Dino Babers now at Syracuse, Dave Clawson now at Wake Forest. Buffalo will kick it away, and the Falcons, fresh off a 44-16 win over Kent State, will receive. Bowling Green football to start, and a terrific kick return. On a short return, we'll get the Falcons out across the 35. So it will be the true freshman, Daigie, for Bowling Green. Falcons 2-7. and seven. They are 2-3 and three in MAC play. This is a team coming off a 4-8 and eight year. And the quarterback has been the issue for them. Daigie missed a few games with a back injury. James Morgan, the redshirt sophomore, had a difficult year in his stead. But for Daigie, he's completed two-thirds of his passes. A dual threat option can run as well when needed. First play of the game is a handoff, and it is the freshman Claire. It was so hard to take down for about a yard and a half. Jordan Collier on the stop. And right away, they're getting the ball into the hands of that freshman running back, Andrew Claire. And coming into this game, actually prior to this game, they wanted him to get the ball 8 to 12 times was good. They said 15 as many as that tonight as he gets further progressed throughout this season. And they're going to test him out tonight. On the screen, this is going nowhere. Blown up by the Bulls as T.O. Redding gets walloped by Jared Franklin. Great recognition by Franklin, seeing that quick pass to the outside and then running the alley to make the hit. And that puts Bowling Green in the third and long, not where they want to be. Buffalo loves to blitz. Let's see if they dial one up here. Franklin Collier with the first two tackles. Khalil Hodge, the leading tackler, the middle linebacker, the strength of this UB defense. Daigie on a third down and nine. Has some time to throw, and he missed his receiver, threw it behind Janarvis Pugh. Three and out for Bowling Green to begin the game. Not the way Bowling Green wanted to start this game, and, and one of the things that has been an issue for him is, is starting ball games. They, they played better in the second half. Not uh, what they did last week either. They, they were extremely good early last week. Jumped out to a 17-0 lead. Here's a three and out. Joseph Davidson at 6-7. One of the nation's best punters will kick it away. K.J. Osborne is back deep for the Bulls. And the left-footed Davidson gets up a high one. 
Osborne with a fair catch made at his own 21-yard line, a punt of 41 yards. There is a flag down right in the middle of the field. Ten yards from the end of the kick, first down. Ron Hudson is our referee tonight. First time we hear from him. So for Lance Leipold's Bulls, it will be the redshirt sophomore Tyree Jackson. We just saw a 6'7 punter, which is awfully rare. It's not quite as rare, but not common that you see a 6'7 quarterback, but that's what you have in Jackson. Yeah, when he came to Buffalo, he was 6'5, and he's grown that much in the last three years. And they don't know if he's done yet, as a matter of fact, but he is a physical specimen. 245 pounds, he can run. I mean, it's a, a coach's dream. The deal for, with him is getting him those reps, those game speed reps, so that he can take advantage of all those talents and strengths that he has. Began the season as the starter, hurt his knee in the fourth game against Florida Atlantic and missed the next four. So both teams have used three quarterbacks this year. Officials are having some trouble spotting this football. The foul was on the kicking team. The 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down, Buffalo. Well, that's unusual. You don't typically see a foul on the punting team. And it should be terrific field position once this ball is set down for UB. And one special note on Tyree Jackson. It's his birthday. That's right. 20 years old today. Happy 20th for Tyree. We'll see how happy it is. <laughs> so far, it's good. And here's a quick hitter to his favorite target, Johnson. They love to get him involved early. That's catch number 56 for Johnson, who comes into the game 112 yards shy of 1,000. He'd be the fourth bull ever to do that. And they'll move him around. Originally, he started as an X receiver uh, primarily. That's uh, to the weak side, the lone guy over there. But uh, people figured out where he was, and they started double covering him, him. And so now they move him around and try to avoid those uh, combination coverages. Johnson at the top of your screen right now. After a gate of a couple on first down. Emmanuel Reed is the running back. Sophomore from Crestview, Florida. And he will take the ball here. Reed jetting behind his offensive line. And the pulling block of the center, James O'Hagan. Gain of five yards for the 5'8 sophomore Reed. And a Buffalo running game kind of reawoke last week. They had several tough components and... and uh, Reed had a knee bruise, and it kind of slowed their running game down for several weeks. Last week, they came back, and, and Reed got over 100, and they moved the ball well on the ground. Fourth 100-yard game of the season for him. It's a team that lost its starting back, Jonathan Hawkins, the third game of the year. Jackson on a third down. Fires one, and nearly intercepted. It was behind his intended target. And Brandon Harris, the outside linebacker, had it in his hands but couldn't hang on. Yeah, that's one Tyree Jackson is very fortunate it didn't go the other way. And, and the thing about it was he had Anthony Johnson out of that bunch set wide open across the middle of the field, but he took his eyes off him. Back-to-back -back three and outs to start. Kyle DeWean will kick it to Marcus Milton. Movement up front, we have a flag. Pointing from the side. <laughs> That's one thing you'll always see when that flag goes out. It wasn't me, it was them. And the Bulls are going to get the benefit here. Offense coming back out of the field. Offside, number 24, defense. Five-yard penalty is enough for a first down. That's just a big error. It's Tavares Wade, who's a defensive back, playing on special teams. And that, that's a, an alert, especially when it's fourth and less than five. That's one of the things that everyone talks about while they're on the field. Hey, don't jump off sides. It gives them a free, free first down. Well, that's what they did. And Wade's a player who really just plays on special teams. So the critical error gives Buffalo a fresh set of downs. Jackson will give it to his back read again. Buffalo likes to try and establish the run game early, and 
We talked to these coaches, Lance Leipold, this morning, Ray. They don't want Jackson to run too much coming back from the knee. We might see it a little bit in this game, but most of it seems like it's not in the playbook. Yeah, and, and you know, it's interesting to me because looking back, he averaged around 12 carries a game back when he initially started as a starter. After taking that month off with the knee injury, he watched uh, his replacement uh, Drew Anderson play really well from the pocket, and I think he picked up a lot from that. Now the carry for Reed sets up a third and three after a gain of four. Tackle by Clint Stevens, the Bowling Green corner. And Stevens missed last season uh, with an injury, and he's come in now, and he's, he's fighting for playing time with Cameron Jeffries, the starter, and he's done a really good job. It's either broken up or deflected 17 passes, and he's picked off three, Clint Stevens. On a third down, another handoff for Reed, and he is smacked in the middle. Penetration came from big Nico Lautner, number 54, and the Bulls will bring out the punt team again. Lautner got his first start last week and played extremely well. And so they're, they're riding that hot horse, and he showed you he can play. He's very quick and uses his hands extremely well. Let's see if uh, Bowling Green can not go off sides and maybe get a punt return here. DeWean will kick it away. The ball spotted at midfield. And the Falcons left their defense on the field playing punt safe. Fair catch called for by Milton. He will let it bounce inside the five. And this thing spirals out of bounds to the one. A 49-yard punt for DeWean, and Bowling Green will have 99-plus yards to go to the end zone when we return. Terrific kick by DeWean, and a hometown Buffalo bounce. Falcons will start this possession from inside their own one-yard line after the 49-yard punt from Kyle DeWean. Falcons are a good running team, and the back right now is Josh Cleveland. They'll try to get some breathing room, and they will do so as Cleveland stretches out near the five for a gain of four. And Cleveland is... Uh... They say the quickest 10 yards in all of the MAC. That's what Bowling Green sells him as. And he has great explosiveness. The thing about him is you don't know where he's going to end up. He's one of those guys that you, you call an inside zone, and next thing you know, he's going around the end. And that can be a double-edged sword for an offense, but he's been productive. He's a 4-3-40 runner there starting back, and Cleveland will take it again here and get spun down. Ball came out as well. Bulls are trying to argue and say they have it before Cleveland went down. They came up with it. At number 90, Justin Brandon has the football. The question is, did it get popped out? It looked like Brandon not only Ruling recovered on the field, it, but forced it. Is the ball was taken from the offensive player prior to him being down. First down, Buffalo. And you can see he tackles the football, and it comes out of the hands of Cleveland and lands right into his belly. And he's got it. That's his ball all the way. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 9 minutes, 47 seconds. 9, 4, 7. So Brandon with his first forced fumble and first recovered fumble of the season in the same play. That's a man play right there. I mean, you got to be a man to just rip the ball out of somebody's hands. I've seen it one other time this year against Bowling Green, but that happened against the rookie Andrew Clare against Northern Illinois. So first and goal for Buffalo from the six. Give to the running back Reed a stutter step and only a yard. Well, we talked to these Buffalo coaches about their defense. Brandon and Chris Ford, the two inside tackles, are not the guys who pick up the most statistics, but Lance Leipold and the defensive coordinator Brian Boylan praised their play, and that's the biggest play of this game so far made by Brandon. No doubt. Now, Buffalo struggled a little bit in the red zone, had a critical interception against Akron last week that would have been the difference in that ball game. So they need to find a way to punch it in down here. Double tight end set. It is Reed bouncing off a player and finding the end zone. Eighth touchdown of the season for Emmanuel Reed. And the Bulls strike Pigard after the takeaway. 
and you mentioned it. He ran into Marcus Milton. Milton had him. I mean, he had him wrapped up. But Reed showed some power for a littler guy. He's only a 190-pounder, but he pulls out of the arms and the grasp of Milton. You see Milton come off the edge and then watch Reed be able to get away from him and struggle into the end zone for Buffalo to draw first blood. Extra point from Adam Mitchison makes it 7-0. Points off the turnover for Buffalo. The sophomore Emmanuel Reed started the season as the backup. Took over three games in. And he has the first points of this Tuesday matching affair. College football. Brought to you by Sonic's Car Hop Classic. Pair a foot-long coney or a cheeseburger with onion rings for $2.99. And Allstate, official protector of college football fans. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app. Start streaming tonight. Bowling Green Falcon is happier than he ought to be right now. His team just turned it over at its own six-yard line. Bulls punched it in two plays later. The run from Emmanuel Reed. Buffalo a must-have game. The Bulls need to win out to qualify for a bowl at 6-6. Six and six. Kick is away from Adam Mitchison. And this is Wilcox from his own six-yard line. Runs into his own man. And it still bounces forward. A good return for Matt Wilcox, who was the Mac East Special Teams Player of the Week last week. There is a flag down at the end of the play. Return of 29 seems unlikely to hold. And that flag came out late. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number six, receive team. 15 yards from the dead ball spot. First down, Bowling Green. That's the first unsportsmanlike of the game for number six. Yeah, that's the returner, Wilcox, who is called for the unsportsmanlike penalty. Third special teams penalty already against the Falcons. Yeah, and that's just some somebody saying something they should not have said, and they're going to they're going to nab you for that. And this is a sloppy start for this Bowling Green football team. I watched them last week; they went into Kent, and they were sharp right from the get go. Not the same look in their eyes here tonight yet. And Coach Mike Jinks in his second season, his team with wins over Miami and Kent, two and three in Mac play. And we'll give it to Claire, the freshman, who is swallowed up after a gain of three yards. Khalil Hodge on the hit. Well, it's a good lineage of coaches here at Bowling Green that Mike Jinks is falling into. Urban Meyer, a young Urban Meyer before he went to Utah a couple of years at Bowling Green. And the last two, Dave Clawson at Wake Forest for five years. And Dino Babers in the ACC as well, doing a great job with Syracuse. As Claire breaks it to the outside, cuts back in. And gets himself right up near the first down marker. He is so hard to take down. Great hustle by Chuck Harris running that thing down. And you'll see a lot of those type of plays from that Buffalo defensive line. They keep hunting, hunting after that ball gets past them. And that was a great example of it from Harris. Quick snap here. And Daigie on the quarterback sneak falls across the 30 for a first down. It was quick tempo knowing they only had a few inches to pick up. And that's kind of the way Bowling Green will use their tempo. They'll use it situationally, and they like it on those quick short yardage plays. And also, after they string a couple of first downs together, they got the defense a little worn out. That's when they try to hit the gas pedal on them. Well, they just picked up their first first down of the game. Diggy, the true freshman from his own 31. Pressure collapsing on him, and Diggy is swallowed up by Ford. The interior lineman Chris Ford with his first sack of the year. What a start for Buffalo's defensive line. Chris Ford, he's making his 28th start tonight, and he is a solid guy in the middle of this line. And he's going to just get a one-on-one -on -one look, and they basically forgot to block him. The guard looks inside. The tackle was occupied, and they better get a hat for Mr. Ford. 
Claire trying to bounce side again. And Claire is spun down, not yet to the original line of scrimmage by Tatum Slack. Let me ask you a question. How do you forget to block a 6'3", 315-pound <laughs> guy? They must have not seen him. It's the only thing I can <laughs> think of. That, that's just a mind bust. And, and understand, this this three guys on the interior of Bowling Green's offensive line, you got John Kurtz is making his second start at right guard, Caleb Bright his second start at center, and Tim Blair is getting his first start at left guard. So they're young in there, and Ford took advantage of it. Banged up group. Having a tough start to this game. Daigie steps up over the middle of the field, and he hits Datron Guyton for the first down. And Guyton's been really coming on for this Bowling Green football team. Had some excellent plays last week, and he shows you another one there. And Daigie, you mentioned he stepped up into the pocket. That's a displaying his composure, and it, all things are breaking down around him, but he steps up, keeps his eyes down the field, and delivers the mail. 19 on third and 11. Back to the ground here. They have Cleveland in the game, and there goes Cleveland. There's that breakaway speed you talked about, Ray, all the way down to the Buffalo 32 for 19 more. Well, the, the first 10 of those 19 were the fastest in the match, if you're listening to Bowling Green. And he does have a gas pedal. He can flat out fly. Right back at it. A quick hitter from Diggy this Great time. And a couple of yards. Good open field tackle made on Wilcox. And Bowling Green had the numbers out there, and that's why Daigie whipped it out there. But Tatum Slack was able to basically beat the block and make the tackle. You don't see that very often where a corner can do both those things on one play. A lot of times he's just going to force it back inside where the help is coming from. But not Tatum Slack. He did it all. This is an area where Bowling Green thinks it has an advantage. Buffalo's best corner, Cameron Lewis, is out. So Slack has come from reserve to a starter tonight. Claire wrapped up and thrown down by Khalil Hodge. Second leading tackler in the country, Hodge, with the stop. He's something special. I, I love the way he plays. He's an inside linebacker by trade, but they'll move him around to the edges. They'll, he'll be the tip of the spear on some of their blitzes, and then he is outstanding in zone drop pass coverage. Uh, this kid can do it all. He, he's a guy that you might see playing on Sundays. Very productive. Tenth play of the drive for Daigie. Takes his shot. It's real dead. It's a Bowling Green touchdown. It's Quentin Morris, the big freshman out of Richmond, Texas, with his second touchdown of his young career. And when we spoke to the offensive coordinators, Kevin Kilmer and Andrew, excuse me, Andy Patron, they said they had a package for Quentin Morris. And, boy, this is part of it. Just a, a corner route, little seven route. Daigie hangs in there and takes the punishment and still delivers the perfect throw. And we were talking about uh, Tatum Slack and how well he did the previous play. Not so much on this one. They said they had a package, and they said he might score a touchdown tomorrow. He, exactly what they said. They were on to something. They must have known something. M imagine that. Yeah, right? Well, Game plan works out beautifully. Extra point for Jake Suter, and it's a terrific drive for Bowling Green. 80 yards in 10 plays. Three third down conversions, including this one from freshman to freshman. and the college football playoff. New edition of the college football playoff ranking, second edition, released just a few minutes ago, and the only change in the top six is TCU moving in. Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame, and Clemson still in that order consist of the top four. And we'll have some changes this week, some monster matchups, including five versus six in the Big 12. Notre Dame, Miami as well. Basically an elimination game. Yeah. Loser leaves town sort of thing in both of those games. Well, Saturday night, we're going to have the big one for you on ABC. Miami moved up to number seven in the college football playoff rankings. They get Notre Dame still at number three, eight Eastern, five Pacific. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. First time these teams have met as ranked teams in 27 years. Notre Dame hoping to be led by Josh Adams in this game, who left the 
Went over Wake Forest, banged up early in the game, but what a season for him. Nearly nine yards per carry for that explosive Irish run game. Yeah, they've got a really nice offensive line at Notre Dame, and Adams has been the beneficiary of that. Third possession for Buffalo, and Tyree Jackson will heave it down the field. He has a receiver, and it's hauled in. It is Kamadi Holsey who got a step on a couple of Falcon defenders. That was an amazing display of arm talent by Tyree Jackson. He's rolling to his right on the run, and he throws this ball over 50 yards in the air in a perfect strike. He lets it go from the 20, and his man's going to catch it all the way near the 30-yard line on the other end of the field. I don't think Bowling Green thought he could throw it that far. They know now. It's a gain of 51. Holsey averaging more than 17 yards per catch on the year. The Juco transfer from Philadelphia. A real nice game last week. Has been picking it up as the year's gone on. Back on the ground, Emmanuel Reed with a touchdown. And a couple of yards on first down. Well, you see the tools already with Jackson. We might not see the legs as much tonight, but the arm strength is awfully impressive. Yeah, and he used the legs to escape the pocket sure. and get to the edge. So... Uh, I think he, we will see him run a little bit. He looks like he's moving better tonight than he did last week on tape. But if, if Bowling Green can't keep him contained, they're going to be in trouble. Read out of the game for this second down play. Theo Anderson, who usually gets every third series. Jackson fires a strike here. Reeled in by Johnson. He scores a Buffalo touchdown. Two pass plays on the drive, 72 yards, and a score. And the arm of Tyree Jackson is jumping off the page right now. He's going to just throw a quick out route. Cameron Jeffries, the corner, has the, the coverage, and he just doesn't react to the ball. The ball's thrown so fast, it zips in there. Uh, Jeffries, by the time he reacts, he kind of overshoots it, and then Johnson's pretty good after the catch. A nice execution. What a drive an answer didn't take long did it three plays to go 75 yards after the 10 play drive for bowling green seven touchdowns for one of the nation's best anthony johnson tyree jackson came back last week after missing four games with an injury he said the time off helped him. He got to watch and analyze games for the first time as an experienced college quarterback. I'm not sure you can analyze a 51-yard dime on the run <laughs> or the rifle he uncorked for the Johnson touchdown. No, that's just talent stuff right there. But his ability to see those things might have helped uh, his time off, might have helped that. Matt Wilcox in the Bowling Green return tries to slip through blue. And he is down near the 35. Jeremiah Danabo got him low. That was quite a display from, from Tyree Jackson on that last drive. He did not throw the ball with that kind of zip and velocity in last week's game. So he is one uh, week further healthy. Actually a little bit more than that because they played a week ago from Saturday. But my goodness, I, I did not see that kind of arm strength and arm talent on film. Oh, well, we've had three touchdowns in a row after two punts and a fumble to open the game. Here's a flip dropped by Cleveland. That is an incomplete pass. Fitz winners the headlinesman quickly is on an incomplete forward pass for a second down. This is a close one in terms of whether or not it's a la it is a lateral. Let's see where he gets rid of the football. That, to me, is a lateral, no question about it. Now, it's a moot point to some extent because... The ruling on the field was an incomplete forward pass, second down. Because Jackson jumped, uh, excuse me, Cleveland jumped right on it. Um, but what it would do is move the ball back a couple yards if they decide to review it. Well, the officials are not going to take a look at this, or are they? They just stopped it. Harold or, or maybe uh, Buffalo challenged it. Uh, I know Coach Leipold's out on the field, and he was in the ear pretty good. Harold Dynas is our replay official, and he might be pressed into service early. Yeah, and it really is there's not a whole lot of competitive advantage on this thing. Basically, it's just going to be a loss of a few yards for Bowling Green. Take another look at it, and... 
Throws the ball from the 30, and it's going to be caught on the 31, or dropped on the 31, or excuse me, 29 the other way. But to me, it's it's almost moot because Cleveland jumps right on it. So if they change this play, it'll be second and 12 right. rather than second and 10. The line of scrimmage at 35 looks like he fell out at the 33. Coach Leipold is still making his case over there. Still talking to Ron Hudson, the referee. He's got that look like, I can't even believe it, what I'm hearing. Coach Jenks, he's just minding his own business. For now. This play is not going to be reviewed after all, all right. despite Lance's best efforts. And I think it's because of very little competitive uh, effect on the play. Diggy takes a deep shot. Single coverage and just out of the reach of Guyton. He was one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Williams and could not catch up to it. Just barely overthrew that football. I, I had him last week, and he did not overthrow a single deep shot. And that's the one of the, the things in terms of teaching that deep ball, that 50-50 ball. You want to give your guy a chance, especially the receivers that Bowling Green has. So they don't want you to overthrow that thing. They Actually, they want it to be thrown 37 yards on the dot, which it was just about at that that measurement, but a little too long for the receiver. Diggy third and ten, a rush of four, and Diggy will shovel it away to Claire, who is hit a couple of yards shy of a first down. Ran right up to the line of scrimmage. Some improvisation for Diggy, but he is two yards shy of a new set of downs. He made a similar throw last week um, where he pitched the ball out while he was scrambling, and that tells you that his eyes are downfield. And it tells you he's got great peripheral vision to see the man out on the edge and then get it to him. But to no avail, they have to punt again. That's Davidson, the All-America candidate for his second punt. No chance to return this thing for Osborne. A fair catch inside his own 20-yard line. Another 41-yard kick, and again, no return. What a season it has been for this young man, the punter out of Finley, Ohio. He has had more punts down inside the five. In fact, more punts down at the one-yard line than he has touchbacks. It's amazing, you know, when a few years back and they started changing how they drop the football and kick it with that backspin, and now it's a science, and these punters just keep getting better, and, and Davidson is outstanding. I mean, when you're dropping them down at the one, you got it going on. Five wide for Jackson. His pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. David Konowalski got a hand on it. Nice play by Konowalski, and, and that's one of the ways to stop those RPOs, those quick passes out on the edge after a run fake. Your defensive ends have to be aware because they're often in that throwing lane, and Konowalski does a great job of recognizing that, getting his eyes to the quarterback, getting a hand up and knocking it away. Redshirt junior from Milwaukee, 6'3", 241. They love his motor off the edge. Jackson will throw it inside here, reeled in. Beautiful hands by Holsey at a high pass. A first down again of 12. That Beg your pardon, 14. That was an RPO right there as well. A run pass option. Runs called in the huddle, and then they end up throwing a pass because the quarterback likes what he sees. You see the fake handoff? He makes this decision by watching the edge defender, and if that guy closes into the box, then he's going to let it fly. If that guy stays back, he'll hand it off. Jackson with time to throw, heaves one, and there is some contact before the ball got there, but no flag. I'm amazed because there's no doubt that Montre Gregory ran into Jamal Island before the ball got there. I mean, you be the judge. Pretty simple to me. And there's no doubt that that's pass interference, yet it wasn't called. And Buffalo in a huddle which is a rare occasion for them. Bulls team with back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives, a short one of six, and then a drive of 80 to follow. 
Jackson will throw again. Another deep ball. His receiver has a step. And Johnson reels it in. He will score his second. 69 majestic yards. How about this Tyree Jackson? I mean, unbelievable. Happy birthday, son. He's throwing this ball around the yard. Unbelievable. I mean, these are almost indefensible. Got so much air under it so that Johnson could just run under it. And Clint Stevens, who was up in a press, they're going to have to back off because if they keep pressing these edge receivers, it's going to be a long night. Anthony Johnson came into tonight's game. Averaging 99 yards per game. He is at 91. We are in the first quarter. And if they, they, I'll tell you what, the top has been taken off of this Bowling Green defense several times, and they are not going to be happy about that. Perry uh, uh, Eliano, uh, excuse me, Eliano, the defensive coordinator, he's going to be talking to those guys, and, and they're going to back up. I mean, they, they've been pressing right now. Well, Bowling Green's allowed more than 35 points per game. They have some holes, and Jackson has exploited them. Well, you look at the throws he's made tonight. This one on the run, perfect ball, 50 yards, plus in the air. He follows that up with another dime shot to Johnson, who takes it to the end zone. And then they said, okay, we have something here, and we're going to take our shots. And boom, they hit him again with another one, a perfectly thrown ball. And this Buffalo Bulls offense is off and running. Or throwing. 69 yards on that last throw from Jackson to Johnson. How nice it is to be a Buffalo Bull right now. Three consecutive touchdown drives here in the first quarter. Falcons seem like they've been on kick return all game. And Bowling Green will start right about the same spot. Terrence Stevens taking it up near the 35. And I don't think Bowling Green has to really get away from their game plan yet. I mean, they had one nice drive where Seth Day, or excuse me, Jarrett Dagey was three for three for 50 yards and threw the touchdown pass. They might tend to call some more passes, but they don't have to change things just yet. They do have to get together on defense and figure it out because after the opening punt, you can see all them TDs up there. Well, this is an excellent Buffalo team in the first quarter. They average more than eight points per quarter in the first. They're at 21 tonight. Falcons are usually a little bit of a slower starter. Their points usually tend to come right around halftime. And in the third quarter, and Miller for seven years, Scott Miller with his first catch. Falcons 44 last Tuesday in the win over Kent State. So they could score their athletic on offense. Claire bounces it out after running into his own line, and Claire finds the edge for a first down. That's what he does so well. Yeah, if the first hole isn't open, he'll bounce to the next one, and the next, and the next. He finally got the edge. He's that explosive. And the other thing he'll do is he'll, he has a stop-start move that is second to none. Yeah, he's explosive. How do you defend him if you're a linebacker? Yeah, you try and hit him really hard and intimidate him is what I would do. Good luck with that, though. He's a hard guy yeah. to hit hard. Easy to save him up here, right? Yeah, and, and you know, the thing you have to do in, in against a guy like that is play team defense. Keep your leverage. You can't try to be a hero and, and do things that you're not supposed to do. Stay home, play your technique, and don't worry. If he's not there, he'll be there shortly. Almost sounds a little like defending the option. Don't over-pursue. Be disciplined with the way he moves around. Keep that leverage. After the catch for Miller, it will be Claire up the middle here and thrown down by Damone Harris as we complete the first quarter. A must-win game for Buffalo, which needs three more wins for a bull. Number 32 of the way they're playing so far, they're on their way to one. Three straight touchdown drives for the Bulls, who lead by 14. told us when you're building a program you need to figure out where you're deficient and address that and this Buffalo team scored just 10 points in the first quarter all of last year they've surpassed that by leaps and bounds this season yeah even just tonight as a matter of fact they've doubled it um, and 
you know what? It's it's gratifying to a coach when you re- when you identify that deficiency, but then you got to do something about it, and they certainly have this season. Bowling Green football from Buffalo territory. A third and three begins this quarter, and Daigie, the quarterback, keeps the football and goes backwards. Jordan Collier with a hit behind the line, a loss of three. Great timing on the blitz from Collier. He snuck up to the edge late, and Bowling Green never identified him, and then he pursued uh, from the backside and just runs the quarterback down, and and Daigie never saw him. There's no question. He was running power read. He thought he was going to be able to pop it up the middle and get whacked from the blind side. Six tackle for a loss for Collier this year, the transfer from UAB. Now some shuffling of the formation here for Bowling Green. Getting which fancy. will still kick it away. You can get as fancy as you want. Davidson will still do that. Pinning Buffalo down at the 9. Punt of 37. And this Buffalo offense has been electric so far early in this game. And it really starts with the quarterback. And Tyree Jackson, 5 of 8, 156 yards, a pair of touchdowns. As you see the plays and the, the, really, the, the Buffalo scored so fast, they don't need that many plays or time of possession. And they've got long completions of 51, 21, and 69 so far in just that first quarter. Anthony Johnson has been a star, no surprise. The leading receiver in the MAC, three catches, 91 yards, and two touchdowns already. Bowling Green has gone to a cover two, and they've got two safeties now 15 yards off the ball and backpedaling at the snap. They do not want to get it thrown over their head again. Darian Hutchins with a stop on Theo Anderson. Of course, it is a Tuesday night second of the college football playoff rankings. The top five are the same. TCU moves into the top six. Miami, Wisconsin right behind them. Oklahoma and TCU, Notre Dame and Miami playing this week, so we'll see some more shakeups in these rankings. Yeah, I threw my hat in the ring with my top you got six. Here, right? Pretty much similar to what they have, a little bit of different order. And then I've got Wisconsin. I, I'm respecting the Badgers right now. I, they're undefeated. We'll find out this week when Iowa comes into to Wisconsin, and, and that'll be a nice feather in their cap if they're able to win that game. And they still have... You know, some a Big Ten championship down the road. They play Michigan. They've got some opportunities to pad their, their resume. Jackson was looking for a deep throw. Instead, he checks down, and he finds his tight end in the middle. That's Andrew Gray, the Maryland transfer, with just his second catch of the season. Yeah, Zach Lefebvre, their normal backup tight end, is out this week, and so that gives Gray some opportunities. Quick tempo here for Buffalo, and the handoff to Theo Anderson. That's Nate Locke, the linebacker, stepping into the hole and filling it quickly. And Locke played extremely well last week, and they love him. They they say on and off the field, his walk is something to be admired, and and he's a great leader for that Bowling Green team. 4-0 GPA kid. As Johnson is the target here. Right across the sticks, a first down. Well, they backed up the corners. Uh, the problem is now the ball will come out very fast, and then Jeffrey's got to make an open field tackle on Johnson, and that's another iffy proposition. And he's already at 100 yards, Rand, just four catches. That's what they said they want to do, though. We've seen the deep shots, but they like to get in the ball quickly. Yeah, he, they can get him the ball any which way, and they, that's what they want to do. They'll motion him into the backfield. Uh, they'll line him up in the slot. They'll put him at either outside position and find ways to get him the football. Juco transfer Johnson back to the ground game and Reed who could not quite find the edge ball is spun out late and the Falcons look like they're on top of it. That might well be a loose ball. I think he landed on top of of the defender Marcus Milton. Milton punched it out. Ruling on the Milton field got on top. Recovered by the defense. First down Bowling Green. If it stands it's the 14th fumble recovery for Bowling Green this year. Yeah, leading uh, the country, really. But, see, I I don't, I think that's a fumble because he landed on top of Milton when he went down. And then the ball came out before he hits the ground. And then Milton, of course, hustles to get on top of it. But no part of his body had touched the ground, and that ball's out. That, that will be a... The ruling uh, of a fumble recovered by the defense is under further review. I believe that play will stand, and Bowling Green will have another fumble recovery. Well, you mentioned it. 
their premise uh, their prowess here at getting fumbles they were one behind utah state coming into tonight for the fbs lead this assuming it stands will tie them it's funny for well, bowling green you look at the points allowed they've allowed 35 per game but they have 22 takeaways on the year if this stands yeah it's either take it away or give up points and that, that's been an issue with them and the other issue is they don't score enough points off of those turnovers uh, you know they're they're like seventh in the country in turnovers forced but only 34th in, in uh, points scored off the turnovers there's a uh, deficiency there, deficiency there and that, i already made my case I, to me that's a, an easy call for our replay official mr dinas milton had an interception last game this would be his first forced fumble and fumble recovery of the year. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Bowling Green. So the 22nd takeaway of the season for Bowling Green. It snaps Buffalo's streak of touchdown drives at three. And the Falcons will get the ball in bowl territory. A lot of teams... Look at only 55 points off of those takeaways. That that is a, a serious deficiency. And they have to take advantage of those things much better. And they're going to go with a, a reverse to try to do so. Yeah, Cleveland the reverse to the speedy Bubble. Miller. He lost the football. It's right back to Buffalo. Looks like Jarrett Franklin jumped on top of it. Punched out by Chuck Harris, and Bowling Green once again. Fails to convert a turnover into points. Recovered by the defense. First down, Buffalo. And they tried to get fancy. A lot of teams will take a shot or run some kind of trick play after a sudden change. That's exactly what they do. And Harris, he just manhandles Miller and knocks the ball loose. And they're right there to jump on it with Jarrett Franklin. Well, that's two turnovers for Bowling Green in the game. They've yeah. now committed... 21. They have 22 defensively, but the ball just pinballs back and forth in these games. Yeah. Hot potato. From its own 41, Buffalo has the ball. Jackson with a short fire to Tyler Mabry. Gained of a couple of yards to their leading receiver in terms of tight ends, Fred Garth. Bowling Green's leading tackler with a stop. Just a quick outside route, and that's uh, in place of a run in this offense. And they'll do that. They'll throw the quick outs. They'll throw some, some lateral screens and other ways to really enhance the running game without handing it off. They don't have a running back in right now after the read fumble. Motion Johnson give to him. He flips back. Some trickery here. Jackson will throw it to Johnson, and it's over his head. <laughs> little razzle dazzle right there and then anthony johnson I, I mentioned they find ways to get him the ball they pitch it to him and then he hands it off and then he runs the wheel route down the field and they try to throw it back to him that was kj osborne in between there you said the phrase hot potato a moment ago yeah they were playing it again yeah. actually good um discipline by matre gregory and staying with his guy, Anthony Johnson, on that play. Johnson motioning into the slot right on this third down. Jackson looks his way, and Johnson will hang on to the football. Did he have the yardage? I think he's going to be short. short. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's right directly in front of me, so I have a wonderful angle of it, and he did not cross into the 49-yard line. And now Buffalo has a decision to make, and they're running out the punt team. Now you're up 14. Why not? You know, you're playing you like good this defense. Call. I don't hate it. Um, if I have a fake punt, I would consider that, though. But I have no problem with this decision with a 14-point lead in the way that the game is going. It is a punt. Kick from DeWine will take a Buffalo roll inside the 10 and grab by Milton there. And Milton probably saved him about five, seven yards or so. Bearded gentleman you're looking at right there, Seth 
Dagey. It's the last name we've been calling today. Not a first name, though. Seth, the older brother of Bowling Green's Jarrett, their true freshman quarterback. Seth, a terrific quarterback. Texas Tech fans remember him a couple of outstanding years for the Red Raiders. Now the wide receivers coach for his brother's team here at Bowling Green. Yeah, Seth, nine years older than Jarrett. And Jarrett was around the whole time he was there at Texas Tech. And he even knows some of the old signals. They, they still get flashing back and forth to each other. First through the middle here for Claire. There is a flag thrown back near the line of scrimmage. And that is generally holding on the offense. Holding. Number 55. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. It's the center, Caleb Wright. For Jared, he's just a true freshman starting, but the coaches talk about how advanced he is. How much of that is from being around his brother? Most of it. And his father was also a high school coach in Texas, and he was immersed in the football his entire life. And, and he's a really bright kid, and that's why he's so far ahead for being a true freshman in terms of running the progressions in the offense and understanding those different things. Claire again. Try to find some space, and he has nothing. Interior of that line has played very well today. Matt Otwanowski, the linebacker, came up for the tackle. Jared Franklin helped that play, getting some penetration. And he's an interesting um, ball player for this football team as well. He wears number 41 in honor of Solomon Jackson, who passed away in 2016 after a winter workout with the Bulls football team and each year they decide who gets to wear that jersey and the family gets involved and Jarrett Franklin has that honor this season. Starting linebacker right now. Franklin pushed by an offensive lineman near the end of that play. It'll be a third down and long. I, I think what you said there is really nice that Solomon's family, his parents, really get to have the final approval on that. Lance Leipold said, yeah, we have a suggestion, but it's really their call in the end, and they love this kid, Jared Franklin. A couple of years ago when Leipold came in, Jared had had back surgery, and the doctors cleared him to play halfway through the year. Lance asked if he wanted to redshirt, and Jared said, if I could, I would, because I see what's happening with the young players here, and I want to be a part of the future. Nice closing play here at a third down, Brandon Williams. Excellent coverage, and Bowling Green will punt. Yeah, he actually, uh, that's a suplex move. I don't know if that's legal, but it's a nice wrestling technique. Pick a guy up, slam him over your shoulder onto his back. As somebody's ready for the Ric Flair yeah, 30 for 30. They, maybe they got a preview on that thing. Here's, here's your suplex right there. That's how that goes. Well, Buffalo chose to punt on fourth and one from midfield. It looks like the Bulls. Dogs at home yet again for the second straight week. Well, you know, these Miami players are relishing this moment. I was at the game last week, and at the end of it, linebacker Shaquille Quarterman was shouting, nobody believed we could win this game. And then in his post-game comments, he said, it's an us-against-the-world mentality. Nobody wants to see us succeed. Nobody wants Miami to win. And we're going to do everything that we can to prove these people. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Sam Adams. Fill your glass. And eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. Explosive night for the Buffalo Bulls, needing to win out to become eligible for a bowl game. They have Ball State on the road next week, then they host Ohio after that. Their offense has been clicking tonight. Three touchdown drives and three plays of 20-plus yards through the air. Yeah, it's been an unbelievable start for the birthday boy, Tyree Jackson. And he has been really special tonight. And you see the remaining games for the Bulls. They'll be a prohibitive favorite against Ball State. Ohio, not so much. as They're uh, one of the top teams, and they are the top team in the East Division right now, uh, tied with Akron at 4-1. Big game for Ohio coming up with Toledo tomorrow, but that Frank Solich coach team, one of the top threats in the MAC as always. Bulls hoping to get to their third bowl game in program history, and their first under Lance Leipold. First carry for Emmanuel Reed after his fumble, and he gains four. 
the Bowling Green defense has changed the, the way they're playing in the secondary. Uh, they, they're a little gun shy right now, and they, they have backed off a little bit. I'm seeing more zone, some cover two. They don't want that ball thrown over their head again. How does Jackson exploit that? Well, he's still getting press occasionally, like he's got it at the top of the screen here, and they may be thinking and talking about that right now and uh, take a shot down the field because they have that, because they haven't been getting it. It's Kamani Holsey at the top of the screen with the pressure. Jackson instead over the middle. That was a brilliant decision. First catch for Jacob Martinez. Middle of the field wide open. UB takes advantage for 30. And Tyree Jackson sees the blitz coming and knows he's got a hot receiver out to his right. That's where he zips the slant in. And that's just a great move. Uh, from the slot by Jacob Martinez crossing the face and getting open and right back to Martinez who drags a Falcon across the 20 into the red zone eight yards on first and ten and that's another product of having the the defensive backs from Bowling Green back off now you can run your, your quick screens to the edge Jackson with a shoulder fake firing for the end zone a high pass off the head of Mabry and it looks to me like Mabry should have gone up with both hands that high. He tried to one-hand it. Uh, it was a little bit tall of a throw because Jackson had to get it over the linebacker. Nice underneath drop there by number 11, uh, Aaron Banks, really taking that play away, though it could have been caught. Took the shot on second and short. Here comes that sugar huddle. Long one. That sugar huddle they like to run. Powered up the middle for Reed, who is slammed. Depends on the spot. Doesn't look like he has enough. Brandon Harris, who's had a terrific year, the junior out of East Cleveland, closed the hole. Well, Bowling Green has seen this on film because Buffalo's run it throughout the course of the season. They'll run this, what they call a sugar huddle. They hurry up, line up quick, and they try to really get tempo out of that. Well, they got tempoed right in the face by a nice fill from the linebacker. Brandon Harris, he said, no, nah, you're not going to fool me on that. Here's that sugar huddle again. Fourth down, back to Reed. And he looks to have enough. Couple of yards, first down, Buffalo. And Jake Molinich, the number 48, the backup tight end and also the fullback in those situations, he got the key block to open things up. Why is that so hard to defend, that quick huddle, that sugar huddle? Well, they come out, they've got different personnel. They bring in an offensive, extra offensive lineman to play tight end. They got another uh, two tight ends in there as well. And then you've got an unbalanced line and it, it's just hard to get your bearings. Where do we set our front off of what? And, and by the time you figure that out, they've already snapped the football. Reed again, try to jet around the edge with a flag thrown. Reed is inside the five, but there are three flags right now. This may not stand, and it will not. Holding, number 65, offense, 10 yards, replay first down. Tomas Jack Cordilla, the sophomore right guard from Montreal. And he's just going to... You see the right guard there, and he's just working outside on the three technique, and he's trying to hook him. And, he, and unfortunately, he hooked him real good around the shoulders and then threw him to the ground. That's a pretty easy call. Gus Schwederman was dragged to the ground. Jackson off the right hand of Johnson. This is something that offensive coordinator Andy Kotelnik, he talked about us with, where... Johnson is being self-critical. Sometimes he needs to go up with two hands. Is this one of those spots? I think it is. And this is a tough little hole. I think the ball's overthrown. I don't know that he would have got it anyway. But you try and fit that ball between the safety and the corner. I know John Gruden calls it the turkey hole. And uh, that time it was just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, we all learned that new term yesterday just in time for Thanksgiving. Yeah, missed the turnover while we were at it. But, hey, <laughs> here's Martinez. Back near the original line of scrimmage. Third catch of the drive for Jacob. I love the way Tyree Jackson is, move, is using the whole field, and he's getting it to a bunch of different guys, spreading it out. He's in total command. You know, it's, it's hard to fathom the improvement he made after sitting down for four weeks with that bad knee. But watching the tape before and then watching him now, 
he's made incredible strides. Lance Leipold said he's maturing into the quarterback we thought he could be. Only a redshirt sophomore from Norton Shores, Michigan. Mona Shores High School, that's near my hometown. Here's Reed in the swing on third and 11. And Emmanuel Reed, out of the flats, looks to have enough for a Buffalo first down. First and goal coming up for the Bulls. Get a nice block by the left tackle, Kazarzak, on this one. Watch the left tackle and his ability to now leave and then out in space. Block a little guy. I mean, those little guys, they hate to see the big ones coming like that. A lot of times you can shake them, but not Kazarzak on that one. 6'6", 315, Kazarzak, local product out of West Seneca. Reed down to the two. Set up second and goal as we move toward the four-minute mark here in this quarter. And they like to run Reed out of the pistol formation. I don't know for sure, but I, I bet that he was an eye back in high school because he has such a great feel when they get him back there, that running the downhill and making the cut and exploding outside, the various things you do from that position. They got him there again. Sophomore to Crestview, Florida will take it. Reed toward the goal line. He lost it. Bowling Green thinks it's picked up another turnover. Falcons have the football. How about the Bowling Green defense? It was Gus Schwederman to recover, and it is officially a fumble. And Bowling Green Ruling stands. On the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Bowling Green. And it was Brandon Harris who knocked the ball Time out. out on the field. And it landed right in the lap of Schwederman. So wow. Please wow. reset the game clock to three minutes. Bowling Green football. We seconds. return. Three. Yet another takeaway for the Bowling Green defense. Gus Schwederman gets the championship belt. He recovers a fumble forced by Brandon Harris. And Bowling Green has the football at its own two-yard line. 23rd takeaway for the Falcons this season. They moved up to second in the country. Tara Diggy out of his own end zone. Incomplete diving try here for Scott Miller. Falcons are no stranger not only to takeaways, but they are no stranger to big takeaways up against their own goal line. October 7th, up by one point in the closing minutes against Miami, Ohio. A bot snap, and it was Harris who forced out the fumble you just saw live, recovering this fumble for a 93-yard return, and the first bowling green win of the year was sealed. Out of the end zone, Claire, Andrew Claire darting his way and dancing down to the 19. And he got a nice block from his big tight end, Hunter Folkertsma. And then it was all hit, all clear. And what amazes me is his vision, how he saw this last guy that he makes the cutoff. There's the block by uh, Folkertsma. But how he saw that last guy out of his peripheral vision, I don't know. It's almost like he's got uh, rear view mirrors or something. Four straight 100-yard game is for the true freshman from St. Louis. Dakey with a completion over the middle. Big hit applied at the end by Kobe Green on Miller. But a catch of 20 yards for a Falcon first. Nice little zone beater there. He hit a guy in between the, the two linebackers and in front of the safeties. Uh, well read and well thrown by Jarrett Dakey. 23 straight games with a catch for Miller. First team All-Mac receiver last year. Back on the ground, and Claire, who has been the more heavily involved to the two backs with a couple of yards. And, yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of Cleveland tonight. It's been mostly Claire, and that's what the coach has told us. They, they feel like he's at that point where uh, he's, he, he's a little more mature, and they think he can handle more of a load, and that's what he's getting thus far. Over a 1,000 all-purpose yards on the season. Daigie's got to get rid of this football quickly. He does just in time. It was Guyton over the middle as the pocket collapsed from behind him and in front. Yeah, Damone Harris had great pressure on an, a speed rush around the edge, but I just love Daigie's composure. He felt that pressure, stepped up into the pocket and let it go before he got whacked. That's a knack that, that he has. He's got a great internal clock. Third and four for Bowling Green. Dagey's pass reeled in by Morris. 
A touchdown recipient from earlier with a gain of eight. And there's another example of Jarrett Dagey understanding the offense, knowing what they needed for the first down, and where is that guy that's going to get it for me? They ran Morris on a quick out from the slot. Boom, boom, move the chains. Cleveland back in as the running back under two to play in the half. Dagey feeds Miller again. He has a first down grab, his second of the drive. Got covered by Gaddafi Wright, who's a tall, wiry player, but a linebacker, and that's a good matchup for the speedy Miller. No doubt, and that's why they put Miller in the slot, so that he gets those type matchups, and that's Dagey uh, recognizes that immediately. And I, I think Bowling Green needs to keep this up, throw the football, and then mix the run in. Dagey takes his shot, and he overshot his he, receiver. He knew it, too. He was all upset with himself because he had six points right there with Guyton running down the field uh, a good couple three four yards behind the Buffalo defense and Dagey just overshot it and he was upset as you can tell had hit eight of his last nine passes before that overthrow first true freshman to start at quarterback for Bowling Green in 35 years Returned last week after hurting his back earlier in the year, catching a pass. Yeah, against Akron, they, they got razzle-dazzle on him and ran a throwback, and he got whacked. And he, he still gained 20 yards after he got hit. And how about this throw and catch? There is a flag down near the line of scrimmage. It was T.O. Redding on a spectacular throw from Dakey under pressure. We'll see if it stands. And that's a nice toss to the outside, and... and He's got it to me now. That, yeah, he's holding on to that football. Number 14, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is second down. Well, T.O. Redding has been making a habit of he's this special. spectacular catches in game after game, and that's just his first one. He made one last week. We're going to show you right now, which it got called back because of a holding in the offense. But here's your one-hand stab of the day. I mean, this is just sick. Those are the kind of plays that Redding is capable of, and, and Jared Dagey's well aware of that, and he's going to look for his guy, especially in this area of the field. So third to yard, the back, Cleveland takes it and runs for the first down. Cleveland almost out of bounds, and look at this. On the sideline, Cleveland a hard hit from Tim Roberts. I think it was Cleveland applying the hit to Roberts first before Roberts wrestled them down. Yeah, and, uh, and then Cleveland limped off afterwards. But these guys are going at it. Uh, Slack misses them, and then it's on. But Cleveland's out of the ball game. They're going to have to take a look at him. Andrew Clare returns. Minute and 28 here in this first half, and the Falcons trying to cut this to a one-score game. They like the tight end in this area of the field. Dagey will just flip it out of the flats to Redding. Slipped away from one tackle. Couldn't get free from Kobe Green, the freshman free safety. And Dagey was looking for his tight end, Hunter Folkertsma, who ran a, a little inside route, and it just wasn't there. He had to come off of it and, and find another guy, which he did. And give credit to Dagey. I mean, you talk about going through progressions. He's very good at that. Folkertsma and Hunter Scadabo, the two tight ends to the right of the line here. Falcons still with three timeouts, being patient. The play fake. Dagey, end zone. Incomplete with the flag. It was Green, the true freshman, in coverage on Redding. And it looked to me like Green had his left hand on the receiver. And that's where they're going to get him. Pass interference, number two, defense, 15-yard penalty, ball will be placed at the... Well, still waiting to figure out where they're going to place it, but... Correction, ball will be placed at the two-yard line, first down. I don't know, and looking at it again, that left hand was on the hip, but I don't believe it affected the play that much. Uh, tough call for Green. Bowling Green trying to milk this clock as much as they can. They don't want to get Tyree Jackson back on the field with any kind of time, but they still want to punch this thing in. 
You try to run it here on first yeah. down? Yeah, sidecar eye, run the ISO, and go jam it in there. Instead, it's a little flip out on the fade, and it's knocked away by Brandon Williams in coverage with Guyton. You like that call? Not, I don't mind it. It's a first down, so everyone's thinking run, especially me, and, and you try your fade out to a big receiver. Uh, no real problem with the call, um, but you, to me, you run this thing in. But they've had trouble with that, and that's that's been an issue for Bowling Green, scoring touchdowns when they get down in this area, the, what they call the tight red zone. Claire, this time, he will heed the call and score a Bowling Green touchdown. He, he made an incredible move. Uh, there, there was penetration from Miles Nicholas, who got across the face of the of the blocker, and Claire saw it, and this he bounces it outside the penetration. A great vision. And then the ability to find it and finish it. Hodge hit him, but not soon enough. So remember, this drive started all the way back at Bowling Green's two-yard line after the turnover. And the Falcons marked 98 yards down the field to make this a one-score game. Andrew Clare with his fourth touchdown run of this season. Buffalo was all set. It looked like to punch in a touchdown for a three-score lead. Bowling Green gets a fumble, and the Falcons march 98 yards as the freshman Andrew Clare finishes it off. One of the best drives of the season for Mike Jinks' crew, which is looking for a second straight win. And, and more importantly, a 14-point swing. I mean, they, they could have been out of this thing. No now, now it's a one-score game, and look at Andrew Clare. I mean, he's been hit. He's got 12 carries tonight already, and he wants more. He says, feed me. 12 for 49 yards and a touchdown and one catch. It'll be Nick Fields to kick it away for Bowling Green. And this is a high, short kick. It'll be Buffalo football. The Bulls at their own 35 with 33 seconds to go in the half. Well, some big college football games for you this weekend. This, of course, just the start of the college football week. But Saturday afternoon, fourth-ranked Clemson takes on Florida State at 3.30 Eastern. Then at Starkville, number two, Alabama and Mississippi State. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Crimson tied number two in both editions of this year's college football playoff rankings. And a one-game lead over Auburn with the Iron Bowl in a couple of weeks. How about this stretch for... Auburn, they have Georgia yeah, this they, week, then Alabama, a few. They can make their own ticket right they there. They sure can. Number 10 right now in the playoff rankings, Auburn. With the SEC continuing to be a top-heavy league, three teams in the top 10. This run might never end. This might take <laughs> us to the half. This is a scrum. Theo Anderson for a gain of nine. And Buffalo is in no particular hurry to run another play. Yeah, they don't have to if they don't want to. And the body language tells me they're done for the half. Well, Buffalo will get the football to begin the second half. Bulls could have been up 28-7 had they converted the the on a goal-to-go -go situation. Instead, Bowling Green forces a turnover, and the Falcons have made this a seven-point game. Great first half, though, for Tyree Jackson, who looks as healthy as he's been. Yeah, he was outstanding. Uh, that one drive when he threw that 61-yarder down the field, nothing short of amazing, and they're going to need him to do more of that in the second half. 21 to 14 lead for Buffalo. The Bulls have to win this game and their next two to be bowl eligible. Bowling Green is trying to play spoiler. 21 14, Bulls lead the Falcons here in the half on ESPNU. Up next, it's our halftime report. Welcome back to UB Stadium there in Buffalo, New York. The hometown Bulls need to win out to become bowl eligible. They're on top right now, but only by seven over Bowling Green, 21 to 14 with former Buffalo Bill Ray Bentley. I'm Kevin Brown. It was going to be, we thought, a three-score lead for Buffalo. The Bulls with a late turnover, and Bowling Green drove down the field 
for his score. We'll get to that at the end of our first half highlights. The standout in the first half of the Bulls, the quarterback, Tyree Jackson. Yeah, him and the receiver, Anthony Johnson, hooked up several times, including a deep one here for the six points. Jackson, three of five on the deep balls, and incredible arm strength displayed and led the Bulls to a nice lead, and they were right down here to pat it to three scores, lost the fumble, Schmiederman picks it up, and then Bowling Green goes on a game-saving, at least first half-saving, 98 play drive, or 98 yard drive, and they punch it in with the touchdown from Blair, and now it's just a seven point ball game. That was, I can't even tell you, that 14 point swing, how huge that was for Bowling Green. First half stats, Buffalo has been the better team through the Air Bowling Green on the ground. Claire 49 yards, just about halfway to 100 already. And the turnover is an issue for both sides. Now, we found out at the half, Anthony Johnson, who caught two touchdown passes for Buffalo and hurt his elbow, is questionable to return. We'll keep an eye out for number 83. It will be Buffalo football to start here in the second half. That would be a huge loss to this offense as Buffalo tries to climb uh, the standings in the MAC and get bowl eligible. Bulls need a win here, win at Ball State next Thursday, and then they come back home the following Friday and face Ohio. They will be favored next week. The Ohio game will be tough, but you have to get there five and six first and foremost. K.J. Osborne from inside his own five as we begin the second half, and Osborne wrestled down across the 20-yard line. Time for tonight's What to Watch For, brought to you by Taco Bell. Well, this is a Tuesday night for some action. More action coming this week. Tomorrow night, it's a good one between Toledo and Ohio. A lot of folks know about Logan Woodside. The skill he has, but Nathan Rourke, an excellent dual threat. Six total touchdowns last game for the Bobcats. And 16 rushing touchdowns on the year, 13 throwing. That kid's got almost 30 touchdowns with a few weeks left to go in the season. So that's going to be a great football game. Toledo's only loss this season to Miami, who has lost to no one. That would be the Miami Hurricanes, not that's, the... That's the, a good point. The Red Hawks. <laughs> Thank you for the confirmation on that. <laughs> Miami, Florida, as Jackson hits his first pass. K.J. Osborne for 13 to begin this second half. What were your impressions of Tyree Jackson in half number one? I thought he was outstanding. The way he threw the football, the arm strength he displayed, the way he spread it out, and he didn't have to run. He's actually, since he was injured his knee and missed four games, he, he's reinvented himself now as a pocket quarterback. And a pocket quarterback who's a dual threat guy too, that's pretty good. The running back here is Theo Anderson, who delivers a blow to one of the safeties and spins away. Anderson ran through Fred Garth, bounced off him, and ends up deep in Bowling Green territory. 26 yards. And you got to wonder if Anderson's in there because Reed fumbled twice in the first half or if it's because he makes runs like this. I prefer to believe the latter because this is an outstanding play. Now, Fred Garth was trying to rip the ball out and forgot to make the tackle first. Anderson, their power back, will stay in from the Bowling Green 39. Right back to him, and he drives his legs forward again. Some tough running inside for a couple. And still no sign of Anthony Johnson for the Bulls. And it's, they're going to miss him, but they've got some other guys that can make plays. There's no question about that. Who becomes the key to this offense now, in your opinion, with Johnson out in terms of the pass catchers? Yeah, to me, I'm going to go and say that Martinez has to make some plays and also Holsey. Those are the two guys that need to step up. Martinez had three grabs in the first half, so he's on it. Jackson taking a shot for Osborne. K.J. Osborne. Touchdown, Buffalo. Yeah, Osborne has to step up, too. <laughs> he won't wait. He just did. What a throw again from Jackson, though. I mean, this is a, a beautiful a throw as you can make down the sideline, right on target. The receiver doesn't have to break stride whatsoever. And again, they get behind this Bowling Green defense. And Bowling Green, it, it happened to them early, and now it happens again late. And this was a zone. They're in cover, too. And Fred Garth just got there late. Jackson has already thrown for 295 yards 
He set a career high last week with 313. Three touchdown chucks for this young man. Yeah, and this is just another beautiful throw from Jackson. And Buffalo comes out in the second half, firing away 28 to 14. We're just wondering which wide receiver would have to step up in the absence of Anthony Johnson. K.J. Osborne, the redshirt sophomore from Ypsilanti, he took the bell. 37-yard touchdown catch from Tyree Jackson. Yeah, it's cover two, so he gets by. And we talked about the turkey hole earlier, and this is a great shot into the turkey hole for a touchdown. Cover two. In between the safety and the corner. Short kickoff here and a good run back for Stevens. Terrence Stevens for Bowling Green. Out across the 40 and two late flags. A couple of Bowling Green players were locked up with one of the Bulls. And it was Tim Roberts of Buffalo. Yeah, he was on the wrong sideline to be talking what he was talking in Bowling Green. They, they responded. Quentin Morris was involved for Bowling Green. Our referee is Ron Hudson. We'll hear from him. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 22 of the kicking team, 15 yards in force from the end of the run, first down. It is Roberts, who is a terrific kid, and they love him, a Juco transfer from Fullerton College, but not the sort of penalty you can afford after a touchdown, and it will put the football in Buffalo territory. Yeah, he was a MAC defensive player of the week. Last week was Tim Roberts. Had six tackles, an interception, and a, uh, a tackle for a loss. But uh, that one's going to go against him. And he's uh, uh, nominated for the, a nice award, the Campbell. Essentially the academic Heisman, yeah. Wants to go into nursing, 3.68 GPA. Try to erase that last play from his memory. Here's a little flip to T.O. Redding from Jared Dagey. And a nice run after technically the catch for nine yards. Right. That'll go down as a, a, a catch in a, a passing play because he flipped it forward, which is a smart thing to do because if the guy drops it, it's an incomplete, and you don't have to worry about that fumble. Redshirt senior from Warren, Michigan, has really worked on his body this year, become their number one wide receiver. Broke out in the Miami-Ohio game with 197 yards and a couple of touchdowns. On second and short, Daigie looked like he might take a shot. Instead, dumps it off to Claire, who was tackled low by Franklin. Has it up for a first down. Shows you again the composure and poise of Jarrett Daigie. Had the pressure on him, and once again scrambles with his eyes down the field and is able to make a play when nothing's there. And, you know, he's not a dynamic runner, but he's an excellent scrambler, and he knows the pocket, has a great feel for that as well. You've seen six-plus quarters now, the true freshman, Daigie, last week in this. Where do you think his biggest strength lies? I think it's mentally, his ability to get into the right play, read the progressions, make good decisions, and in the close second is his deep pass, his deep ball. Daigie trying to set up the screen, and he just chucks it into the ground. Yeah, he had some serious pressure on him in the form of Chuck Harris and trying to set there up the screen. There is no foul for intentional grounding. Number 45 was in the area. In his last two games, Jarrett Daigie's gotten called for intentional grounding. In fact, the, the coach has joked with us, we have to teach him that rule a little better. Apparently he learned. He got away with one there. Donovan Wilson was the receiver in the area. So it'll be second down and 10, no flag. Big pressure from Buffalo here, and Daigie finds his soft spot to Miller. Good for a first down right at the edge of the red zone. Buffalo blitzed that, their linebacker, Khalil Hodge, and Daigie was able to handle that and still get the pass out. And he had great patience in this one. He knew he had a crosser coming late, and Hodge will hit him, but he still hangs in there and makes the throw. Claire trying to cut back inside and a good first down run of six. Well, Buffalo told us they don't love to blitz. They did get two Daigie there, and it, it shows you the advanced play. Not a lot of true freshmen, I think, would hang in against that kind of pressure. Yeah, and, and we're... We talked to Brian Borland, the defensive coordinator for Buffalo, and he said he doesn't really blitz just situationally. Well, I believe my eyes more than what people tell me. 
<laughs> and they blitz a lot, and they have brought it tonight throughout. A lot of them come from off. Second and two after a very good spot. Redding tried to make another one-handed grab, and he had no shot there. Brandon Williams in coverage. Yeah, Williams was right in his grill, and, and this really forced the throw to be a little bit longer because Daigie wasn't going to take a chance on an interception. He's looking at it the whole way, lets it go, throws it up there where his guy only can get it if anybody can. And then he tried to go up and make that one-hander again. I think you need to go up with two if you can, big fella. Claire on a third down run will plow his way across the 10 for a first down. They caught Buffalo in a blitz on that particular play. Is Khalil Hodge, he totally ran out of the hole and, and crossed into a gap farther away, and that allowed the thing to open up. Well, Bowling Green wanted to get Claire more involved. Only eight carries last week, and they certainly have had him more involved. 14 carries, 60 yards, and a score tonight. Josh Cleveland, who was banged up in the first half, only with four. Pop. Here's the flip to the tight end. It's incomplete. Folkert's had it in his hands. Ryan Williamson was there to defend, and the redshirt senior could not reel it in. That's a great football play coming over there by Williamson to get the hit, although Fulkersma still has to catch this ball. This has become a real popular play in college football, making a comeback. Used to be a big play in the veer option offenses where you run so much that you release that tight end down there and he, no one pays attention. But Fulkersma should have had that one. Second and goal for Bowling Green. Daigie with a flip to Redding. Touchdown! It makes a big difference when you go up with two hands. Very similar to the previous play against Brandon Williams. And this time, the, the big difference was the better body position and the quicker jump by Redding so he can high point the football and then he uses both hands. Nine yards on the flip. Redding's fifth touchdown of the season. And Daigie's stat line is looking pretty similar to last week. Two touchdowns and no interceptions for the true freshman out of Lubbock, Texas. These teams have traded volleys here in the second half. Opening touchdown for Buffalo. Daigie and Bowling Green strike back. On a nice little fade play, throw it to the corner, let your guy jump up, and Teal Redding makes you look good. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Sonic's Car Hop Classic. Pair a foot-long coney or a cheeseburger with onion rings for $2.99. Mr. Leipold, tear down those stands. <laughs> and he did. Buffalo Bulls and the head coach Lance Leipold in his third year breaking ground on what will be a new football building, the Murchie Family Fieldhouse, part of Lance Leipold's efforts is what he says is the work of a CEO slash general manager, not just head coach, to get some new facilities and some money into this program. And they have been uh, practicing indoors. They go down to, to Orchard Park and and go into the Bills uh, facility, and it's really a pain because they got kids that are in classes. you got to bust everybody up there and back. And But he did say Sean McDermott with the Bills has been really good with them and, and le letting them use that facility while they wait for theirs to get built. Third-year head coach, one of the great Division Three coaches we've ever seen. Six national titles in eight years at Wisconsin Whitewater in his third year here at Buffalo. Trying to get the Bulls to a bowl. K.J. Osborne with a touchdown last drive. Trying to get to the 20, and he will not. A little bit shy and a well-covered return. Well, for Buffalo, the big question coming out of the locker room was, would Anthony Johnson return? Our answer is yes, at least to the field. Elbow injury, and he's currently riding the exercise bike. Hopefully for the Bulls, he can get back into the game. And you see they padded up the elbow. Um, I'm surprised it's not taped up. That's, that's probably a good sign, although there's likely tape under the pad. But will he get back in the game? That's the question. 995 receiving yards on the year. Five shy of being the fourth player in UB history with 1,000 in a season. 
Redshirt junior, transfer from Iowa Western Community College, previously Butler Community College. Tyree Jackson, another home run ball on first down, and this is incomplete. It was Osborne who had the touchdown to end the previous drive. This is another really nice throw from Tyree Jackson, and Jeffries is beat again, but just maybe an inch long or so, although I think when a receiver gets a hand on a ball, then you probably ought to catch it, and you probably ought to try to get two hands on it while you're at it. It's a Bowling Green defense that is 10th in the MAC in terms of pass yards allowed per game. 11th in points per game allowed, 35.3. They have struggled tonight. Anderson with a nifty cut inside. He nearly broke it. Still enough for a first down. 11 yards for number 11. And Anderson's done a really nice job of coming in and taking over the running back spot after Emmanuel Reed fumbled twice in the first half. I don't think we haven't seen Reed back yet. Six carries, 52 yards right now for Theo Anderson filling in where it needs to be filled in. It's a Buffalo team without Jonathan Hawkins. It's starting running back since the third game of the year. Reed has been the main guy, not in this half. Martinez on the grab. Another first down for Buffalo. This one across the 40. And they've put Martinez into the Anthony Johnson role. They had him motion all the way across, so when he did run that route, he had a, a little bit of a head of steam going already. That forced the corner to bail, and it allowed Jackson to get the ball out quick and complete it. Came in with 13 catches on the year, Ray. Four tonight for Martinez, 59 yards. Dependable redshirt senior out of Southport, Florida. This one is incomplete, low throw. And Kamadi Holsey could not hang on. Bulls have gone, by the way, to their third string running back right now. That's the redshirt freshman Cameron Pickett who is in the game. Still no sign of Reed. He and lost both of those fumbles in the first half. I'm looking in the doghouse, and I think I see him because he fumbled once, and that's bad enough, but he did twice. In particular, down on the two-yard line, and then Bowling Green responded with a 98-yard drive. That'll keep you in the doghouse. Play fake to pick it, and a whole lot of pressure. Jackson gets away from it, and heaves it down the field into tight coverage. Ill-advised throw, and I think it looked like it was picked by Montre Gregory. Bowling Green seems to think it has an interception. We've had no official call as of yet. Well, the ball's going to be spotted the right back the at the line. An incomplete pass. I know that Gregory had it momentarily, and then the ball came out. The question, you know, it's the same as a receiver. If you catch a football and it's an interception, you still have to meet those requirements of maintaining possession of the ball when you go to the ground. Osborne essentially played defensive back there, trying to wrest the ball away. Yeah, he's got it, though. I, I, they might want to look at that one. because uh, I. Th and there's a flag Substitution down. Substitution infraction. 12 minutes in the huddle, number 84 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. It'll be third down, actually, third and 15. One more look at this play. To me, and the foot was third in down. bounds. He's got the ball, almost a, almost a dual possession type thing, but he came out with the football. I, I'm surprised that they're not looking at that and, and at least, you know, reviewing it. Well, good news for Buffalo. They have the ball. Better news, Anthony Johnson is back in, motioning into the slot left. Jackson over the middle. Let's complete across midfield and enough for a first down for Holsey. Needed 15, and the Bulls get 16. And Anthony Johnson, he comes back in, and now he's a decoy. Why, when he runs this wheel route on the outside, you're going to see both of the Bowling Green defenders are going to go to him, and that leaves the defender inside. See, both those guys drifting wide because Anthony Johnson's over there, and they let the other guy come right in over the middle and a wide-open throw. Nice use of the decoy and understanding where it's going to be open by Tyree Jackson. Anderson back to the ground game. And Buffalo likes to get Johnson 10 to 15 targets a game. How, how important is that, though, not only to target him, but to use him as a decoy? 
Well, I think that's why he's back in right now, because he's going to be effective, at least as a decoy. And, and it's built into their system. They know that other teams see, hey, they're going after this guy an awful lot. we gotta, uh, we got to bend our coverage towards him. Maybe we got to bracket him, double team him, press him, put somebody over the top. You do all those things to take him away, but uh, it usually takes two guys. So now other people will be open. So his presence is vital. There he goes around Montre Gregory. Jackson gives him a shot and Johnson hauls it in. <laughs> what elbow problem? Like he never left. He's outstanding. and The way he finishes is the most remarkable thing to me. His ability to use his body to get in the best position. Because right now, I mean, he has no separation. It's not like he beats somebody running past him. But he just has the wherewithal to find the football at the end of the play. A loss of two for Jackson. Nico Lautman in on that stop. On the last play, though, Johnson went over 1,000 yards. And Jackson has a career high throwing the ball, 350 through the air, 18 for 27. You look at the numbers for Johnson, who redshirted last year, had to finish some classes in summer school, was banged up a bit in fall camp. The coaching staff made the decision to give him the full year to learn the playbook, to rest up. They're happy with that decision, to say the least. And they will be when they're getting back next year, for sure, also. Another catch for Johnson out of bounds of the 15. They're down at six coming up. And they are totally backing off of Johnson now. I mean, they, they had the press on the previous long play. They back off, and then they put someone over the top. Tempo here. Jackson for Johnson. Corner of the end zone. And incomplete. Lost it just at the end. But they did. They came. Jeffries came up and tried to press him again. And I'm telling you, every time Tyree Jackson sees that, he's gonna he's gonna test it. He's gonna go over there. They're gonna run a go route, and they're gonna throw it. Really on the field to is Johnson. a complete pass. And you'll see at the end, this ball will kind of come out. And you got when you go to the ground, you have to complete the catch with possession of the ball, thanks to Calvin Johnson. Uh, Anthony did not fall victim to the Calvin rule there. That was clearly incomplete. A field goal try, but first an official discussion. The ruling on the field is that the receiver did not maintain control of the ball as he went to the ground, therefore incomplete pass. The ruling is under further review. So they're going to take a look at it, but my understanding of the rule, when you go to the ground at the end, you have to come up with the football. Now, he catches it. He's got it. He's got a foot in. And in the old days, that's a touchdown. But he didn't quite secure it all the way. And then it comes out, slips out at the end. You saw the ball slide a little bit in his hand. And that's After why... You, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Fours down. That's why it was confirmed. So Buffalo will bring the kicker out. This is not a strength of theirs. No. Adam Mitchell's in a third-year starter, but he is just 11 out of 18 this year. And he's missed a couple of potential game winners late and, and uh, two of their one-point losses. And those, those uh, make you lose confidence. Not only the kicker lose confidence, but the coach losing confidence in the kicker. Hold your mittens. We are good to go. Quick word from the sideline. This will be 32 yards on the attempt for Mitchison. Jeremiah Reardon will snap Kyle Deween to hold. Mitchison. No. I Missed it to the right. Yeah, wide right's a familiar thing around here, unfortunately. I know from experience, dude. We'll come back and wipe raised tears away yes. when we return. Look at Lance Leipold, the head coach of the Buffalo Bulls. We've got a real-life Buffalo Bill here in the booth with us, though, folks. Ray Bentley sporting much worse hair than he has today. Yeah, Seven my. seasons in the NFL, 86-91 to right here in Buffalo. You were the precursor to action before that, though, my friend. Yeah, I'd love to tell you I invented it, but... Uh... So tell us. Nobody will fact check you. All right, I invented it back in the day.
but yeah, I loved my time both with the Bills and Central Michigan, and, and I wouldn't change a thing if I could. Incomplete pass for Diggy. You played here, you coached here in the Arena League as well. What is the character like of the city for folks that haven't been to Buffalo? What makes Buffalo Buffalo? It's blue collar, it's real people, uh, friendly. And, God, they love their football around here. I can tell you that firsthand. And, and we had, I, I got to tell you, the most wonderful experience. Those, those glory years in the early 90s with the Bills, uh, there'd be nothing like it again. Uh, I can't imagine anyone else having that kind of run. Diggy got hit up high and ripped down to Vaughn Harris with his team-leading fourth sack of the season. And Harris, he's been effective all night coming around the edge, and he does it again. This is really a bull rush. He, he just takes the offensive tackle, Austin Labus, and deposits him back in the quarterback's lap. And then with that long uh, arm span, the wingspan he has, reaches out and makes himself a sack. Both these ends, Damone Harris and Chuck Harris, no relation, have been outstanding for Buffalo throughout the season and tonight. Diggy needs to get to the 30 here, and he will. Pass complete, right in stride to Pew. Janarvis Pew, the redshirt sophomore out of Hollywood, Florida. Just his ninth catch of the season, and it goes for 28. Miles Nicholas has pressure on Daggy, but it doesn't matter. And you mentioned it, he steps up into the pocket again. His pocket awareness and movement is so, it's, it's an instinctual thing. He's been doing it for a long time. He's seen it but he is outstanding at it. Daggy will flip it out here. A soft one and a big hit from Roberts coming up. He got Scott Miller, who has been active in the middle of this defense, six yards on first down. And that's another, uh, basically a sight adjust uh, slash audible. And Daggy saw that the safety was about 10, 11 yards deep off of Miller. And so they both know, hey, hitch that thing up and take your six yards. Josh Cleveland back in as the running back. Diggy keeps it, and he didn't see anything there. Uh, and it, had he been able to get it away from Cleveland a little more clean, he probably would have got around Chuck Harris. But in that instance, Harris was given a little extra time because Diggy was trying to wrest the ball away from Cleveland. Falcons came into the game tied for 108th in the nation on third down. Tonight, they are 7 for 11. And they have five wide receivers in the ball game here in this empty set. Only a rush of three. Incomplete from Daigie. There was nobody home there. No, he changed his mind after he, he saw, at the last second, he saw Khalil Hodge, the linebacker, lurking in the hole. And so he pulled the string on the throw because had he thrown it to the receiver, this is going to be a pick by Hodge. You see him right sitting in the middle there, and that was just a good decision by Daggy late to make that throw because he was looking for the freshman, Morris. Mike Jinks told us the best thing about Daggy last week was he threw some balls away. Mm hmm Osborne nearly bobbled the punt, catches it off his chest, and ends up with a good return out to the 34. Colby Coleman on the stop. Friday on ESPN, it is the sixth annual Armed Forces Classic, honoring America's heroes and kicking off college basketball. SEC and Big 12 contenders, Texas A&M and West Virginia from Ramstein Air Base in Germany at 6 Eastern, that's midnight in Germany. Available on the ESPN app. Excited to see this Mountaineers team. And Javon Carter, the Big 12 reigning defensive player of the year. Playing that frantic, up-tempo, pressing style that Bob Huggins loves. Anderson on the ground for Buffalo as the Bulls begin another possession. Four yards on first down for the redshirt freshman who's become their bell cow. No sign of Emmanuel Reed after two fumbles in the first half. And Anderson has stepped in and done a really nice job. And he's a bigger back at 5'10", 220 pounds. And, and he's had some nice runs. And it's been a little more difficult to tackle him than some of the other guys. This is a Buffalo team that was just 2-10 and 10 last year. Coming in at 3-6, and six, needing to win out to become eligible for a bowl game. They've lost six games by less than five points per on average. Over the middle, Johnson with a couple of broken tackles. 
and another as he dives down to the 42. That's a really nice throw from Tyree Jackson. He slid it in. The linebacker, Nate Locke, almost got there, but he gets it in quickly into that little seam and then watch Johnson go after he makes a catch. He's exciting. Nice numbers there for Johnson thus far. And showing no ill effects from that elbow injury, that's for sure. He'll get a breather. Jacob Martinez has taken his spot. This is the first touch for Pickett. And Cameron Pickett with a nice run on first down. And Pickett had just five carries for seven yards coming into the game. Had one catch, but he's getting action tonight. And we'll see how he does. But I'm pretty convinced at this point that Emmanuel Reed will not see the field again. This is a Buffalo team that is on nine days rest after a one-point loss at Akron Saturday, the 28th of October. And they finally got a few days off. They mm -hmm. had played every weekend of the season uh, prior to getting that little time off, and they, they, they needed it, and they, they look well-rested. Jackson heaving it over the middle, and that was nearly intercepted. Clint Stevens got his hand on it. The target was K.J. Osborne. There were two men in the area. Stevens making a, uh, the underneath coverage, and then they had to throw it over the top of him. And that's why, you know, if there's one thing maybe that Tyree Jackson needs a little bit more work on is, is taking a little bit of that uh, steam off the ball and putting more air under it. You know, a lot of his throws, although that one deep ball, he got it way up in the sky. But on some of the more intermediate throws, he heats them up a little much. Johnson back in the game, wide to the left. Jackson not looking his way. That is a steamer of a throw. A heat-seeking missile to Mabry for a first down. Nice little route by Mabry. He's going to run a wheel stop. Uh, yeah, a lot of times you see these wheel routes where they go all the way up the field. You try and sneak somebody outside the corner. This time he runs that outside the corner route and then breaks it off. And then the throw and the timing is perfect. And that's a nice grab. Second of the game for Mabry, who is a high school teammate of K.J. Osborne. Both out of Ypsilanti, Michigan. They both ended up at IMG Academy, that football factory down in Florida. Pick it. And a short gain on first. Cameron Pickett into the teeth of Nico Lautner in the nose tackle, making his second straight start. Buffalo has done extremely well with the passing game, but you have to mix a run in there every once in a while, and, and that's what that play was all about. Down to a minute remaining here in this third quarter. Tyree Jackson has thrown for nearly 400 yards for Buffalo, but Bowling Green has continued to bounce back. And yeah, they're hanging in there, aren't they? timely takeaways. Buffalo missed a field goal the last drive to keep them within one score. It's, it's just one of those games. And when you let a team hang around, you want to be real careful because they'll come up and get you. And, and that's what Bowling Green plans to do. Bulls do have to snap it one more time in this third quarter after the four-yard run by Anderson. Where do you look here, third and five on the edge of the red zone? I'm going to try and uh, involve number 83, Anthony Johnson, at some point, whether he's the uh, primary target or I use him a as a decoy. Now he's wide left. There's not a safety over there. Instead, it's a run for Anderson across the 20, and it is a first down. That's a really nice play call, and you had an outstanding block by K.J. Osborne in the slot that That's allowed him to get that quarter. extra yardage. Lance Leipold and his Bulls running all the way to the other side of this field. They lead by seven. They'll look for a two-score lead when we return to the fourth. Fun little Maxson game here on a Tuesday night. Buffalo looking to stay bowl eligible at home. Huge quarter for those two men. Mike Jinks on the left, second-year head coach Bowling Green. Lance Delightbold in his third year at Buffalo trying to keep his Bulls bowl eligible. They need to win their last three, and they need to hang on to this victory. 
leading by seven, but they have struggled in the red zone tonight, Ray Bentley. Yeah, and it's been an issue all season long. Uh, fortunately for them, they, they've been able to hit a lot of big plays from outside the red zone, but they need more production here, and now they, they just cost themselves five yards up top. They're going to back out of the red zone. Anthony Johnson, false start. False start, number 83, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. He's trying to plead his case over there, but there's no doubt he hitched before the, the ball was snapped. About the only false note in his night. Right. Eight catches, 160 yards, two touchdowns for Johnson. Buffalo is led by as much as 14. Bowling Green has cut it to seven twice. And now the Bulls have a first and 15 from the 23. And they've got Johnson all alone with a lot of field to work with. And Jackson knows it. Up for his primary target. And it's incomplete. Knocked away by Montre Gregory. Gregory almost picked that thing off. He had it momentarily and then lost it when he went out of the end zone. And this is a heck of a play from Gregory because he's been schooled pretty much all night. This time he was aggressive and going. He grabbed the receiver and then he went for the ball. That should have been pass interference in my opinion. That's more than incidental. Yeah, that, that's a haven't seen you in a while hug. <laughs> Well, there was a break between quarters. Yeah, right. It has probably been a little bit. On second and long, Bulls will keep it on the ground with Anderson. Not much doing. Nate Locke, terrific middle linebacker, fills the hole. And this is a big third down for Buffalo, which just had Adam Mitchison miss a 32-yard field goal. Yeah, you all make you almost think they're in four-down territory <laughs> with the, the way the kicker's functioning. But I, I don't know. We'll see what they do on this third down. Well, from here, it'll be about 38 if you don't get any yards. Try to at least get some more, make it a manageable kick if you don't get the first. And hold your horses. Timeout. Bowling Green. First time out of the half. 30-second timeout. Mike Jinx, Perry, Eliano want to talk it over before this critical third and long. Yeah, and they obviously didn't like the way they were uh, lined up and decided they would change that. We've got a great game for you Saturday night. Playoff rankings just came out today. Notre Dame stayed number three. Miami moved up to number seven. Irish and Kane square off 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and streaming live on the ESPN app. Miami is the longest win streak in the country dating back to last year. 13 in a row. Their last loss last year at Notre Dame. Fun match of a dual threat quarterbacks here too. Brandon Wimbush for the Irish Malik Rozier for the Hurricanes with a big win over Virginia Tech last week. Yeah, I think they opened some eyes. There was some question about who have they played. Now those will be answered here in these last couple weeks. On third and 13, Jackson, a lot of defenders in coverage, and he finds his receiver, Kamani Holsey, Gregory on the stop. So no first down. This will be at least a more manageable field goal, and the Bulls will bring on Mitchison. Jackson did a really nice job. That was his third read, it's the third man in his progression. He was looking deep, then he was looking for the first slant inside. Neither of those were there. He looked out to that third, uh, the other slant from the outside and drilled it in there. So that's good quarterback play, even though they didn't convert. Mitchison missed from the right hash from 32. This from 31. And he got it. Adam Mitchison connects, and Buffalo's lead is 10. Mitchison's field goal gives Buffalo a two-score lead, and Lance Leipold will take every point he can get. He knows he's needed them in some of these heartbreaking losses for Buffalo. A couple of one-point losses there, Northern Illinois and Akron. They led Army 17-7 in the fourth early in the season, and of course, a Western Michigan game. Time for the longest game in FBS history. 71-68 was the final. You flip two of those games, Buffalo's 5-4, and four, and Maybe bowl eligible with a win tonight. You flip one of them, they have a good chance. But as it stands, the Leipold's team has to win out to make it to the postseason. 
Matt Wilcox for Bowling Green trying to make something happen in the return game. And a spinorama up near the 35. Let's talk about that seven overtime game a little bit. Folks oh, in Buffalo don't want to talk about it much. Western Michigan came into town. FBS record 139 points, a four and a half hour game. Tied for the longest game by overtimes in FBS history. And it wasn't even a Tyree Jackson led Buffalo team. Drew Anderson, the backup quarterback, had an awesome performance. But Jarvion Franklin won it for Western Michigan. And then Anderson in the next game went down with a season ending shoulder injury. Bulls had to turn to the true freshman Kyle Van Treese for a start. Good start to this drive. Claire high stepping it near midfield for Bolden Green. 16 yards, first down. I love it at the end of that play. Claire acted like he was going to go out of bounds and then step back into the face of the defender and delivered a blow. But to get back to Buffalo, I think it's a little misleading to see three and six. Yes, yes they've had some injuries and every team does, but to an unusual extent, and some of these losses have been just bad luck, tough to explain otherwise. Yeah, I, I have to agree. And, and, you know, in talking to Coach, he said, we are vastly improved across the board. We just haven't turned that into wins yet. And that's what the next step is for this Buffalo program. Daigie, another deep ball. One on one, and Guyton makes the adjustment to reel it in. What a play by the Oregon State transfer. Locked up with Brandon Williams for 39. And that's a 50-50 ball, and they love the way that Jared Daigie will give his guy an opportunity. And he overthrew a couple early on, but since that time, he's been very good throwing the ball down the field, and that's a huge play. From the 11-yard line, Claire. And a late flag comes in from behind the play, thrown by the referee, Ron Hudson. Nose. Uh, looks like they're pointing at Buffalo. Personal foul. Legal hands to the face. Number 91 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. That's Damone Harris. He's working on Austin Labus and just got the hand slid up into the grill. And they're going to get you on that. Uh, you know, that's one uh, point of emphasis. They're looking for it. And you see. Harris on the outside, 91, and the hands just slip up and you get up into his throat. You can't do that. You got to get it out of there. Tagey to throw it from the two. Flicks it out to the far side. What a toss, and it's reeled in for a touchdown by Miller. Beat the safety, Tim Roberts, but this is your, a classic rub route. It's two guys right at the, on that left side, and they just crisscross, and that created the separation and allowed for a perfect throw from Daigie to land in the Miller's breadbasket. Gets nice air under that football, and there's really no chance to stop it. Bowling Green answers again quickly. What an answer it was. It was Jarrett Daigie in there. They're never out of a ball game. 66 yards and 79 seconds, Ray. How about the play of this young man and his receivers? He's been outstanding, and you got to, I mean, don't count Bowling Green out. It's been one of those kind of nights, and with Daigie throwing dimes, they're still in it. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Sam Adams, fill your glass, and Allstate, official protector of college football fans. Fun Tuesday night it's been in Buffalo. Fun to have action back, these midweek games, and this is an awfully consequential one for the Bulls. They need to hang on, need to win out to make a bowl, but Bowling Green is not going down quietly. The true freshman, Jarrett Daigie, a redshirt sophomore, Tyree Jackson, have been awesome tonight. Yeah, they really have. I mean, the numbers uh, are pretty self-explanatory, but Jackson and his ability to heave it downfield, he gets a little edge in the yardage. But both of them have been extremely accurate. They've made excellent decisions. Uh, no, no uh, egregious interception type throws, and they've been able to move the ball down the field. And we've got a, a barn burner here, and I don't know if Buffalo's too excited about a close game in the fourth no. quarter. 
Bowling Green has not led tonight. They trailed by 14 twice. They've cut it to three. This kickoff will be fielded by Osborne inbounds. Makes one defender miss. Dances along the sideline and is upended across the 30. And this is the, it looks like it's a kicker that makes this hit. Uh, Nick Fields. You see him make the guy miss and then flying in there. Wait. Watch out for that guy. 23 on the return for Osborne, who decided not to let the ball bounce out of bounds. He's going to hear it, though, when uh, the guys see that a kicker upended him like mm -hmm. that. So Tyree Jackson will start this drive from his 33. Give it to Theo Anderson. Right. A season-high night for the redshirt freshman who tacks on seven more yards. Now 76 on 12 carries. And he don't like to go down very much. I mean, we've seen several scrums at the end of his runs where he's just fighting for everything. If you're just joining us and you're wondering where is Emmanuel Reed, Buffalo's starting back, he's in the doghouse. He lost two fumbles in the first half. Did run in a touchdown, but lost the second fumble at the goal line. Anderson has played almost the entire second half with some help from Cameron Pickett. Jackson will give it back to him on the cut. Anderson, a first down run. Nice block by... Mano Salvis, the left guard, he totally washed his man down, and that opened up the cutback for Theo Anderson. How about the balance here for Buffalo now, Ray? That's 34 pass attempts, 29 runs. We talked to Andy Kotelnicki, the offensive coordinator. This is what he wanted to do. This is exactly what he wanted. They've been a little pass heavy the last four or five weeks or so, and he wanted to get closer to 50-50, to and they're getting closer here tonight. Johnson was the motion man. Jackson will rip a throw up in the air and incomplete. Dangerous ball, and there's a flag down late near where Johnson was hit. Boy, and Jackson missed his tight end. Mabry was wide open running down the middle of the field. Never got his eyes over there to check out the Personal backside. Foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 50 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That is Jonah Harper, a huge penalty for Bowling Green. And that's the problem. The Bowling Green football team is a little bit young. I mean, they're playing a lot of young guys. And you start making mistakes and doing extra things, and they cost you. I don't know if I, if I saw it. I mean, he's in the middle there. He took a hit late. I'll have to take their word for it. It's Buffalo Bulls coming off a one-point loss at Akron 10 days ago. So many close calls this year. Hoping to finish a game in the fourth quarter. Anderson plunging ahead for two. Bulls just 2-10 and ten last year. They were 5-4 and four at one point. Lance Leipold's first season lost the final three. They have dominated in terms of yardage tonight. Nearly a 400-yard passing game, and it's frankly an element that Lance Leipold's not had in his three years, what Jackson can do. Yeah, and it's their red zone issues that have made this game closer. They haven't gotten the point production relative to their yardage production. And usually when you have that disconnect, it, it's due to the red zone issues. Four trips, a touchdown, a field goal, a missed field goal, and a fumble. Jackson will keep it here and find a wide open K.J. Osborne. Osborne squirming forward to the 21. 14 yards. First down, Buffalo. It's a run pass option here, and he's, Jackson sees Brandon Harris attacking the box and knows that the man in the slot's going to be wide open, and he gets it out there on time and accurately. Over 400 yards now for the first time in his career, Jackson. On his 20th birthday, the redshirt sophomore from Michigan. And Jackson flips it out here. It is reeled in, but out of bounds. And then the ball, I think, was lost late as well. It was Kamadi Holzer who did not come down with the football. Yeah, and it's just finishing the play because the pass is just perfect. Over the top, 
goes up to get it, and it, when he brings it in and hits the ground, it looks like his elbow got jarred by contact with the ground, and that popped the ball out. Got to secure that baby. Get two hands on it if you can. A nice bounce away from Anderson here, oh. and then he bulldozes his way through Cameron Jeffries. That was a really nice run. First of all, he gets a little bit stacked up behind his offensive tackle on the left side, but he keeps running through that, and then he busts the edge. And when he gets the edge, he's got a full head of steam coming, and then it's lookout time. He's run the ball really well tonight. He's closing in on 100 yards, 98 on 15. Extra tight end, Molinich is in. Anderson driving his way in. He won't go down. He scores a Buffalo touchdown. And you got to give the assist to Tomas Jack Cordila because he took his man from that right guard position and ran him five yards out of the way, opening up a huge hole that Anderson blasted through. Watch the left guard, or excuse me, right guard. He is going to take that guy in the one technique on the inside and just walk him out of the deal. That was Loughton at number 54, 6 3 two, 76, blown up by 6 4 3 oh, 2. Got put on some skates right there. Well, he is from Montreal, Mr. There you go. Second touchdown run of Anderson's career. The Bulls back up 10. Theo Anderson is getting a well-deserved warm-up jacket. 189 yards on the season. 3.3 yards per carry coming into tonight. And the backup running back, who was really the third stringer at the start of the year, has answered the call after Emmanuel Reed's fumbling issues. What a drive for him on the last Buffalo possession. 37 yards and a touchdown. His first career 100-yard game. Trouble with the kick here. Yeah, Falkersman couldn't get a uh, handle on yeah. it. So he just Golden put it on the ground jumped on it. <laughs> Long way to go for the Falcons from their own 20. Saturday ESPN college football playoff spots are on the line. Clemson's got to win out, you'd think, to make it. The defending champs have Florida State, who is still trying to spoil somebody's season. 3.30, then Alabama-Mississippi State at 7 Eastern. Both games on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Let's see if the Crimson Tider challenged in Starkville as Jalen Hurts faces a good dual threat in Nick Fitzgerald. Jared Dagey and Bowling Green are the first and ten after the kickoff. And look at this hit. Tatum slack. Oh, he just blew up Andrew Clare. Yeah, he didn't give him any slack on that, that one. That's how you come up and make a hit. He, he blew Clare up on his quick little out route. You ever wondered how you're supposed to uh, attack after a, a ball is caught in front of you? Now you know. Would you call that a slack attack, Ray? Yeah, I will. Yard for Claire here, third and four, and a huge one for Bowling Green coming up. Chibuzi on Wuka with the stop. Well, Bowling Green is running out of time here. Offense has not been the issue, but they are down two scores with eight minutes to go. They love Scott Miller at number three in the slot, the trips to the top. Daigie looking that way. Pocket breaks down. Daigie knocked away. Khalil Hodge. And, uh, they, uh, Bowling Green, uh, that might have been picked had Hodge not dropped it, uh, knocked it down. Because it looked like there was another guy right back behind him. Hargrove was waiting to pick that thing off. See number 16 up there. And he had his eye on that one. He might have stolen it. But still a nice play by Hodge coming in there on the blitz, keeping his eyes active and ready, and then batting that thing out of the air. Huge play for that Buffalo defense, forcing this punt. And it's a fake. Or not. Or is it? What's he going to do? Or it is. <laughs> First down, Davidson on the run. He didn't look like he knew what he no. was going to do. 
He wasn't sure. Now, they give you a, an option, if they trust you anyway, as a punter. And when you do that rugby-style kick, you can run, and if you can keep running, Wait then you keep going. Second, but though. it's going to be on Bowling Green. Uh, uh, looks like a illegal, illegal formation. formation. More than four players in the backfield on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay fourth down. Oh, and those are the things that will drive a coach crazy. Because now instead of uh, converting it on a, on a play that uh, you weren't really counting on, now you got to go back and try to kick it again. You're going to start to see some gray hair sprouting from underneath <laughs> that winter cap of Mike Jiggs. Boy, does that crush Bowling Green. Yeah, they almost had a huge break on a heads-up play by Davidson. Hey, if nobody's really going to stop you and tackle you, keep running it. They did a nice job of that, but they lined up wrong. What do you think, fake it again just for fun? No. Davidson will kick it away. Not his best kick of the night, although it's been a strong night for him, and he does get a bowling green bounce. Might be worn out from running. Yeah, I wouldn't blame him. Good karma for him, I suppose, after making the run 47 yards thanks to the roll. Hey, tonight at midnight Eastern, SVP has Sports Center at night on ESPN. We're going to talk to Rick Flair after the big 30 for 30. Also, break down the Bucks and Cavs, a showdown between LeBron and Giannis. Everything you need to know as well about the latest college football playoff rankings. Top five stay the same. Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt, also on the ESPN app. Seven eleven to go for Buffalo with the football and the lead. Must win game for the Bulls. Anderson. Now why not keep running it with this young man? We get a scrum after just about every one of Anderson's inside runs. He's starting he, to look like rugby. He will not go down. And they, it's a bit of a revelation. I don't know that uh, Lance Leipold and company knew what they had because Anderson has not performed like this. I, I watched of several games, and he would come in and spell read on occasion, but really never jumped off the screen like he is tonight. I was going to say, there weren't flashes of this you saw in no, film. No, really, that, That's why I'm so uh, shocked and taken aback, and I'm sure the staff kind of feels the same way. It's like, where you been, Anderson? Seven yards a carry. Buffalo is closing in on 600 yards of offense. Anderson. And that's another reason that loss of the fake punt hurts so badly, is it Bowling Green just can't afford to keep giving the football to Buffalo the way the Bulls have moved it tonight. Yeah, and, and it had been pass early on. That's all it was, really. And now with Anderson, they've added a whole new facet in terms of the running game, which is going to open up some play action pass down the road here if they want to take a shot. 406 yards through the air. Buffalo now at 167 on the ground. Pretty productive night. Uh, Andy Kotelnicki, the offensive coordinator, might take a uh, Zamboni ride to celebrate after this one. <laughs> he knows a thing or two about... Those ice the, machines. The ice resurfacers, as, right. uh, he corrected us. Uh, Zamboni is, I guess, a uh, the name of a certain kind of those things. I didn't know that. Uh, I, I, I had no idea either. called a Zamboni. But he, he drove the Zamboni in high school and, and uh, was looking for a job when he got to college, and he went over and laid some knowledge on the guy and got hired on the spot. He says he'll still criticize Zamboni yes. drivers when he goes to Sabres games. <laughs> timeout. Bowling Green. Timeout, Bowling Second Green. Second timeout of the half. This will be a full media timeout. Clock operator, please put five minutes, 43 seconds on the clock. It was a must-win night for the Buffalo Bulls. They're five minutes, 39 seconds away from doing just that, keeping their bowl dreams alive as the Bulls look to make their third bowl game in school history. They're led by a young man who on his 20th birthday has thrown for a career-high 406 yards. His career-high previously, Ray Bentley, last week, 313. Yeah. It's nine days ago. You know, it's amazing. He was a dual threat quarterback when he got hurt. And since he's come back, he's thrown for the 300 plus and now tonight the 400 plus and haven't seen him run the ball but one time. So he turned himself into a pocket passer while he was convalescing. Now that's one rushing attempt in two games. Didn't run it at all against Akron. Key third down here. Jackson Double off move. the putt. Incomplete. He aired it out for Holsey. Just a little bit out of his reach. And those double moves are hard to time out because your, your receiver is going to do a little start-stop action, 
and you, you just never know for sure how clean he will be once he restarts. That time he was pretty clean, but Jackson overthrew it. But they were going for the throat right there. Do you like that call? you like that aggressiveness? I like it, yeah. You, you know, you've got a little bit of a, a pad. Why not take a shot and, and really ice this thing? And if not, punt it to him and let your defense play. you got a 10-point lead. Dwayne will try to pin the Falcons. Has already had a punt downed at the one-yard line tonight. Bowling Green brings the house, and Dwayne gets it away quickly. Milton will return at his own 18 and pick up a few. 34 on the quick punt and return of three and a half. So Jared Dagey, the true freshman who led Bowling Green to 44 last week and a win at Kent State, will try to rally his team from two scores down. He's certainly shown that he can do it. No doubt. Bowling Green back time and time again tonight. And he's going to have to connect down the field here. They're they're running out of time to, you know, have him pick this defense apart with the short passes. So at some point he's going to have to take a shot. Four receivers on a first down. Dagey gets away from pressure and finds a receiver along the sideline. T.O. Redding, short gain, but at least it is a gain. Temporarily stops the clock. Yeah, nice little flip turn by Daggy to escape that pressure. And then, and again, gets his eyes down the field, identifies where to go with the ball, and gets it out quickly. If I, if there's one thing about Daggy being as young as he is, the fact that he gets the ball out so quickly is the greatest strength that he has. Bulls are coming for him again. Daggy with a flip to Claire. He's got a long way to go just to get to the line of scrimmage, and he gets it. <laughs> a masterful juke move from the freshman, Claire. He's two yards shy of a first down. And, and you know what? Claire pointed to a guy, and Khalil Hodge, who was lining up to make the tackle, looked behind him to see what he was pointing at, and that got him kind of messed up. Hodge looks back a minute, and then, he, oh, wait a minute, and then by the time he turns around, it's too late. Well, now a running play to Claire is going to come up about a yard and a half short, and Bowling Green will have to leave the offense on the field. Miles Nicholas on the stop. Yeah, no doubt you go for it here. And they're, they're bringing in their, their big tight end, Hunter Folkertsma, into the mix, along with an, another big back, Donovan Wilson. First time Wilson's been in action tonight, but he's their big pounder at 222 pounds. Wilson with his first touch, pulling his way forward, and on second effort, he got the first down. He ran over right to get that first down, and, the, and it, you know, at first it looked like, oh, no, you don't run sideways on a short yardage play, but he got the shoulders turned back upfield at the end, and that's what gave him his power back. That's just him knowing I got to get there, and he did. Number 45. Listed out for one play, his helmet came off. Wilson has to leave the field after the first down. Wilson ran for over 100 yards against Buffalo last season. In fact, three guys ran for over 100 yards. Cleveland and then their, their other back, uh, Trent Green, who has since graduated. We have an official discussion with 3.33 remaining. Had a few of those tonight. Mm -hmm. Have to go a little bit quicker here if you're bowling green, right? Down by two scores? Yeah, you, at some point, you, like I said uh, initially when they started this drive, got to throw the ball down the field and take your shots. Now, they do have uh, Guyton down here at the bottom of the screen set up, and he'll be uh, basically facing one-on-one -on -one coverage. Please reset the game clock to three minutes, 52 seconds. That was the end of the last play when the helmet came off. 3.52. So 19 more seconds for Bowling Green. And they'll take every one of them. Tegui will float it complete. And it is Miller jetting across midfield. Coverage by Gaddafi Wright. And again, they got Miller in space on a linebacker. Right, and that's lining him up in that number three spot out of trips. And that, that's where, you know, you're going to get that matchup. 
And when they put him in a slot, he's going to get a safety, and that's a favorable matchup as well. He's in the slot right here. Williams in the safety on him. Tagey will find Miller, who finds this soft spot and stumbles out of bounds. A little bit shy of a first down. He picks up eight, temporarily stops the clock. Yeah, and Buffalo has moved their defensive backs back another couple steps and they are well aware of the what the time is on the clock and the fact that Daigie's going to have to think take a shot deep at some point and they're not they're going to try not to allow that Bulls just subbed in four new defensive players and this pass dropped over the middle by Wilcox dropped and kicked is that a drop kick <laughs> I suppose if you want to create your own new statistics, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sure. Well, I mean, drop kick used to be a big part of the game back yeah. in the day. I think Doug Flutie was the last to do it. Yeah, was didn't it the Patriots? I, a few I years think back? Uh, didn't Ric Flair do some drop kicking back <laughs> in his day? Daigie at a third and two, and complete to Miller inside the twenty. On. Daigie did a really nice job with his eyes on that play. First he looked left, then he stared the the, uh, the safety in the middle of the field down, freezing him, and that bought him the time to zip it out to Miller. Big game for Miller, over 100 yards receiving. Former first-team All-Mac player. Daigie gets rid of it and just chucks it away. And that's the first time I, I think Daigie felt ghosts. You know, pretty much he's been settled in the pocket. That time he still had plenty of time. There was no Buffalo pass rush coming to him, and he kind of felt it. That alarm went off. The clock in his head ticked one too many times. He just threw it away. Falcons down two scores from the Buffalo 20. Daigie's got to get rid of this one, and he just barely did. Incomplete. Yeah, Kennedy Amesby coming around the corner and to the back side, the blind side, and Daigie never saw him. And Amesby, he could have done some serious damage. Watch him on the left side, and he's just going to speed rush this thing and get home. A little grab and pull move. Transfer from Cal Amesby. Darts out of the game in the defensive line rotation after a big time play. Falcons have been good on third down tonight, and they can they need ten points at least. So oh, Daigie botched the snap. Ball is on the ground. They're not getting at any points here. Buffalo football, and that's an error by Daigie. He needs to just drop on that football. Chibuzi is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Buffalo. Chibuzi on Wuka got his hands on it. But uh, Daigie's a little too casual on this one because he'll just reach with one hand to pick it up. He still is trying to stay in it, but uh, you, you got to understand that that ball is too valuable. You got to just pop on that one and take your field goal try. That's the second time, Ray, that Chuck Harris is forced to fumble, knock the ball out, and the Bulls. With only one Bowling Green timeout, can all but bleed it away. Yeah, Daigie initially fumbled it and then uh, tried to pick it up, and that's when Harris came in and did his dirty work. Should be a steady diet of Anderson now. And Buffalo hopes he holds on to the football. No fumbles here, and the Bulls are all but guaranteed their fourth win. So many close calls yeah, this year. You don't, it's a little early to say yeah. that around here, isn't it? Sure. The way they've been this year. Only one timeout, though, okay. for Bowling Green. But with so many close calls this oh, year for Buffalo, this been, would be an uh, enormous feel-good win, frankly. Yeah, it's been a heart-wrenching season. I mean, they've been on the cusp and, and had opportunities and, and missed a couple of kicks in their one-point losses and the, the grueling seven-overtime loss to Western Michigan. I mean, uh, some heartbreaking things, enough for a lifetime. Jackson will wait to three to snap it. Anderson. Bowling Green has that one timeout left, and the Falcons are going to use it now. Nice play there by Schwederman diving underneath timeout. there to make the Bowling tackle. Bowling Green, third and final timeout of the half. Bulls need the win if they want to go to a bowl. See if they can hang on when we return. The first down run. 
Anderson will take it. And he has the first down. Fitting that Theo Anderson would put the cherry on top after a career-high 130-plus rushing yards. Redshirt freshman has played almost every down of offensive football in this second half. And I'm thinking you're looking at next week's starter as well because with a performance like that, you ride that hot hand. And, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll let it read out of the, the doghouse. You'll give him a few reps here and there. But right now, it's Anderson's job, and he took it tonight in the second half mostly. Well, the bottom line for Buffalo is this was a game they could not lose. They had to have it. They have to have next Thursday's game at Ball State, which has really struggled this year. Then they have to have a game the following Friday against Ohio to become bowl eligible. They are one step closer, though, and at the moment, Lance Leipold has doubled his win total from last year. Yeah, and he's done a great job, and he said they've seen significant improvement throughout the season. They just it hadn't manifested on the scoreboard. Well, tonight, it did in a big way. Tyree Jackson on his 20th birthday threw for 406 yards, a career high, and three touchdowns. And he gets a hug from his head coach. Break out the cake. A lot of things to celebrate here tonight for the UB Bulls. Well, you ever had a birthday this good? I can't recall one. I, I never threw for 400 yards <laughs> in my life. I know that. Tyree and the Bulls stay bowl eligible. 406 yards, Anthony Johnson caught 160 of them, and Buffalo gets the hard-earned back-and-forth win. A really fun Tuesday night game as Buffalo defeats Bowling Green. 38-28, two wins to a bowl for Lance Leipold's Bulls. Great. That'll do it here for some Tuesday Maxon, right? Yeah, great effort by the Bulls tonight. A fun football game. That's the Maxon sure. right there. Two more for Buffalo and Bowling Green. Tomorrow night, some good matches as well. Toledo, Ohio. Don't forget to join us for that. For Ray Bentley and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Kevin Brown. Up next, the college football playoff top 25 presented by Goodyear.